everybody, and welcome to another live stream here on youtube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. Been a while, isn't it? Um, but hopefully, as you can see, uh, I took some time off to get all well rested and everything. Um, I slept for a month, basically. Um, and uh, it, I feel a lot better for it. I've got energy to do things again. Um, I'm just generally feeling good and excited to get back to some good old-fashioned work. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Bloody hell. Okay, I'm being... Super chats are already rolling in, so I'm going to read... Oh, God. I'm going to read those out, and then uh, we're going to play a little game called The Pale Beyond. Infelix Raw says, Is that a Johnny without bags under their eyes? My goodness. I mean, technically that's quite insulting, but also, yeah, basically... And new glasses, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I'll read out these super chats. Then we're going to play The Pale Beyond, which is um, a game that is right up my alley, and I'll explain to you why. Although, if the uh, starting soon screen meant anything to you, that was quite a deep cut, to be honest with you. The um, glass have knocked me down in one hand and then an alarm bell in the other. But if that means anything to you, good. We're way, uh, you're way ahead of... The things I haven't learned to talk in a coherent manner in the last month, but anyway, it's nice to be back. So let's smash through some of these super chats. Ducks piloting a mech drunkenly has done a super chat, it's a very generous super chat actually, saying, Here's to Johnny, the person who's caused me to buy many games and getting into DD. Glad they're feeling so much better. I'm wondering when the Ox Venturers will level up. They've been at eight since just before the Orb Apocalypse. Yeah, I need to have a word with sort of the whole team about that, because now there's a producer, like things, we have structure and things, so I need to talk to them about when that's happening, but we were throwing around a couple of ideas today anyway, um, about some stuff we're going to do this year, um, so I will get to that uh, ASAP, but yes, they are due a level up, um, it has been quite a long time, and I think people think I'm doing it to punish them, I'm really not, I promise you, but... Uh, yeah, they're about due. Specky Four Eye has a hello. Specky Four Eye has done a super chat saying, "Oh, here's your pay Patreon payment for last month, plus a little extra for the quest adventure in York. Hope you had a good time up here. Can't stay for long since I'm at work. Catch you on Vod Squad. Well, thank you very much for a very generous super chat, Specky Four Eye. And I had a lovely time in York. Uh, it was very nice to meet you and run a game of Quest. Um, and just to generally bimble around a really lovely city with some very good spots to eat and grab and pint, which has been very nice." Uh, Victorina has done a super chat saying, A Johnny return on my birthday! How lovely! Glad to see you back! Well, happy birthday, Victorina! Um, I hope you're having a bloody wonderful day, getting to do whatever it is you like to do, and to just, yeah, just generally having a really bloody lovely time. Um, let's sod it, why not? I came back today specifically for you. Happy birthday. It's all for you. And also the other people watching, but you know what I mean. Um... Uh, da, 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 da. Zega Genesis is on a super chat saying, Welcome back! I got a new job! Me and my BFF put together action figures of Dracula, though because it's just us two, I have to make every second count. Fuck! Oh, how many minutes was that? Four minutes! Four minutes! I go away for a month, and in four minutes I get done. Welcome back. I got a new job. Me and my BFF put together action figures of Dracula, though because it's just us two, I have to make every second count. I mean, I'll hold my hands up to that one. Somebody clip that one, because that is right up there with Scandinavian. Incidentally, the game we're playing today, there's going to be a lot of Scandinavian jokes, I am sure, so get them out your system early if you can. Simply Dave MN has done a super chat saying, thank you for introducing me to vampire survivors. Now when I close my eyes, I see gems flying to the centre of my vision. Well, that sounds good, Simply Dave MN, because then you're getting a lot of XP and you're going to be levelling up. Um, you're very, very welcome. I died on a run of vampire survivors at 29 minutes and 40 seconds a few weeks ago. It was heartbreaking. Um, the Formless Mist Aries has done a super chat saying, good to have you back. Uh, Presley Chiodini kept me sane in the first 48 hours of COVID, so here's a little something to say thanks. Oh, thank you very much. And I'm sorry you had COVID. Uh, I hope the recovery has been smooth and that you haven't um, had any further complications or anything. Um, and I hope it wasn't too weird watching 
Presley Chiodini for like 48 hours. When I had COVID, I was quite ill uh, and I played um, Disco Elysium, which really amplified the whole fever dream element of both COVID and the game. They really were uh, like an excellent and terrible pairing. So that was good fun. Uh, EJ is on a super chat saying, welcome back, Johnny. I also spent a lot of February sleeping and napping. Maybe hibernation is something we should all embrace, lol. I think we should. Um, it was nice. I didn't set an alarm in the mornings. So I was waking up around like 10. And then I'd sort of have some coffee, play some Elden Ring, I'd walk the dog. Like, it was just, it was pleasant. Um, oh, I got sick quite early on. My body did that thing where it was like, oh, are we taking a break? Perfect time. So I got ill for like two weeks, but then I was fine. So, you know. Uh, Daylight Fires on Super Chat saying, welcome back, new glasses looking good, assuming I'll need to buy this game as soon as I've watched this, as with so many other games you've introduced me to. I haven't played this yet. Um, I checked to see if it runs on my computer, and it does, because uh, it's always good to check. Uh, and apparently it's quite buggy, but A, hopefully they'll stamp that out, and B, it's reviewed well anyway, and I think it's going to be right up my street. So I'm looking forward to playing this game, uh, if we ever get there. Um... Danilla Drang is on Super Chat saying, Welcome back. Excellent hair today, Johnny. Have your Patreon money back with a winky smiley face. Thank you, Danilla. Uh, it's very nice to see you in chat. I hope you're well. Um, and I hope painting is going well. I painted barely anything in February, to be honest. Thank you for the compliment about my hair. It's growing quite fast, as it tends to do. Torsten K is on Super Chat saying, Hey, Johnny is back. Take that boring Thursday afternoons. Yes. Um... Yeah, it's good to be back. It's nice. Um, I need to jiggle around some of the painting streams, because at the minute I'm in a D&D campaign on Mondays that's being streamed online. Uh, I'll talk about that in a bit. But um, yeah, it's bloody lovely to have at least Thursday afternoons locked in for just silly, silly nonsense. Oh, bloody hell. David Jackson has done a massive super chat saying, Welcome back. I think you dropped this. Thank you. That was really kind. Um, oh, sh okay. And Joe Humbert's done a massive super chat also saying... Uh, glad to have you back, Johnny. As promised, my Patreon fee plus more. I'm still working on always getting your pronouns right. Apologies in advance for any mess-ups. Do not worry, it is a learning process. I, I know that people are prone to slipping up. I do it to myself, not infrequently, so, like, it's all a part of the process, I think. Hentner Kick has done a super sticker. The super sticker is of a pear. Now, you're probably familiar with a pear. It is a uh, green piece of fruit that is round at the bottom and narrower at the top. Um... <coughs> Normally, that's about all there is to them, apart from like some sweet, juicy, uh, slightly grainy flesh. Uh, this one, however, has arms and legs and a face, and some degree of sentience. Some might say malevolence, actually, because in one of its hands, it has hands and opposable thumbs, um, and its eyes are sort of facing forward in its skull, which marks it out to be a predator, rather than sort of on the sides, so they get more like peripheral vision and they're harder to sneak up on, kind of like a sheep, which is a prey animal. Anyway, uh, this pair has a mug in its hand, and that mug is full of a viscous fluid that I can only assume is blood. Um, by the way, it's slushing around, and from the sort of um, almost demonic grin that this pair has as it repeatedly thrusts a mug uh, toward the screen. So, there we go. Uh, welcome back, the blood pair, and thank you again, Hetna Kick. Um, Axea has done a super chat saying, welcome back. I wanted to give you my Patreon fee for Feb. Call it holiday pay. We'll catch up on VOD. See you soon, LSPs. Peace, love, and hellfire upon your enemies. I have never heard that as a, as a salutation, but it's a bloody good one. Not that I'm saying I have enemies, necessarily. But, um, thank you. That is really kind. I, I paused payments for, for partly just so I didn't have to worry, you know, that anyone was feeling shortchanged. Um... It just felt like the right thing to do. Uh, but thank you very much. That's really, really kind. I did lose one person uh, from the Patreon over the course of the month. And in the exit survey, it said, was not as active as I expected. Which I suppose last month is fair, but still. Uh, Matthew Maudsley has done a super chat saying, I want to say thanks for... Oh, fucking hell, that's a huge super chat. Thank you very much, Matthew. Um, saying, I want to say thanks for all you're doing here. Sorry if this brings the mood down. Oh, but my dad passed away late last year, leaving me to look after his mum. And your VODs have kept me entertained while I keep her company. Oh, I'm so sorry, Matthew. That must be a lot to deal with. Um, I'm really very glad that my stuff has sort of come in handy. But yeah, that's that's a lot. And I hope it's going okay. Like, And you're doing a great thing. Um, but yeah, lots of love. And um, I'm pleased to be back and making more VODs for people to catch up on. 
and streams, but also VODs, because each stream becomes a VOD. You know what I mean. Um, Yaslana has done a super chat saying, welcome back, been binging old VODs, maybe your old play mainly your old playthroughs of Bloodborne, because I've missed your silliness. Glad you got some well-deserved rest. With four heart emojis that are yellow, white, purple, and black, which gives the, uh, the, the non-binary flag colours. This is amazing. I genuinely feel like I can talk. Like, I feel like I can string a sentence together without my brain chugging. This is very nice. Being rested is fun, it turns out. Uh, Lucy has done a super sticker. The super sticker is of a piece of pie. What kind of pie? I don't know. It's a very vibrant red, and there are flecks of what look like yellow in it. Is that a cherry pie? Let's say it's a cherry pie, because if I don't say it's a cherry pie, someone's going to allege it's a meat pie and that it's been made by the the blood pair. So that is canonically now a cherry pie. Mmm, cherry pie. Made popular by being delicious and also David Lynch. Marble Harbour. Marble Harbour has done a super sticker. Um, has done a super sticker of a pear. This pear does not have blood in its hand. It has a party blower, like, and a party hat, and it's doing a jig, as if to say there is something worth celebrating. Um, which uh, I will take to mean you're glad that I'm back, which is nice, because I'm glad that I'm back. Um, ooh, Victorina asks, how is Pig? Pig's doing great. Um, she's fully recovered from her surgeries. She has regained the muscle mass she lost. She lost about half a kilogram in muscle mass, and she gained like some a little bit of, of padding around her, um, around her middle. Uh, and so we've been... I walked her a lot over the course of the last month, which has been lovely, and... You know, we're continuing to walk her, obviously, but um, she's back in, like, tip-top condition now, which is really, really nice. Uh, it is good. Brian Mullard has done a super chat saying... Oh, bloody hell, again, it's a massive super chat. Thank you, Brian. Uh, saying, welcome back, Johnny. I hope you're feeling a little recharged. Perhaps you may need to take a, re a regular larger breaks for your physical and mental well-being. We are more invested in your health than your content. Uh, thank you, Brian. Um... I feel like this has done me some good. Um, I don't feel like I'll need to take like a whole month off again um, for a good long while, but it has made me think about sort of uh, taking my time and, you know, making sure that I'm all right. And I think one of the changes I'm going to make is I'm going to start recording batches of Press Any Kiadini episodes so that, number one, like I don't have to worry every week about being like, okay, when am I going to fit that recording in? It's more like if I have a buffer of six weeks and there's a week where I'm busy or tired or whatever, I can take the time and not have to worry about the, the, the show being interrupted. So it's better for the continuity. It's better for me. So I think that's a change I'm going to make. Um, anyway, Garina Rain has done a super sticker. It's the pear again, but thankfully the pear once again does not have blood on its hands. Uh, instead, it's, it's a straw boater and he's doing like a fun jig. And there's confetti raining down from the ceiling with the text, uh, you are amazing. Um, thank you, Karina. Uh, as you may know, I am allergic to compliments, but uh, I will absolutely take this one um, because it's nice to be back. And you didn't summon the blood pair, which is your usual thing. So, yeah, thank you very much again. OK, we're, get, we're getting there. We're getting there. Soon there will be video game. Uh, Sarah Burke is on a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, you are incredible, you're super awesome, and I'm very sorry, but I might accidentally fall asleep because your voice is very soothing, and I'm very sick. That is quite all right. Do not worry about it. Um, you know, like, again, these streams are for people to nap to if they want. That's fine. Um, I'm planning an episode of Calm Stuff for this month that I'm quite excited about, actually, um, which people could find useful. But um, more on that in time. But um, I'm very sorry you're sick, Sarah, and I hope you feel better soon. And I really hope this game doesn't penetrate into your dreams and give you nightmares, because I think it might get a bit real. Uh, Shows the Great and Powerful, a.k.a. P. Noctum, has done a super chat saying, Welcome back, everyone. I hope you've all had a lovely break. It's nice to see you all again. Indeed, welcome back, everyone. Um... It, I hope you've all been all right, and I'm very glad to be able to sort of smash so many wonderful slightly cursed people together again in a wonderful chat ball of well wonderful slightly cursed chatness um uh revka i want to say um has done a super chat saying welcome back johnny we've all missed you here's my february free feb 
February Fee, excuse me. Thank you for being you and creating this wholesome, lovely community. Thank you. That's really bloody kind. Um, again, like I was, I was pleased to pause the payment cycle because it just meant I could take a clean break. But um, that is a very, uh, very kind thing to do, um, nonetheless. Carrie Choi is on Super Chat saying, at this rate, you're not going to start to play soon. We missed you, Johnny. Welcome back. Thank you, Carrie. Um, it feels like we're getting there. Feel, hmm, I say that and they keep rolling in. Uh, we will get there, I promise. There will be video game at some point. Chris Rakowski has done a super chat saying, Welcome back, Johnny. It's wonderful to have you back. I have my latest OU assignment due in today, so thank you for this video to reward me for getting it finished and submitted. You're too kind. Chris, you're welcome. It was my pleasure to get out of bed this morning and say, Chris Rakowski has got a, an OU assignment due in today, and I feel like Chris could do with a little treat at the end. Um... And this is what we came up with. So there you go. Uh, Ethan Blomquist is on a super chat saying, Welcome back, Johnny. Hope you had a great break. Very happy to hear the dulcet tones of Skelly Dad and be back among the wonderful Skelly Pals. Have a pint on me. Thank you. I was thinking I might go for a pint after this stream just to be like, hey, look, we did the thing. We're back. So that'd be, that'd be nice. Thank you very much, Ethan. Um, Sean, uh-oh. I feel like I have been told how to pronounce your surname before and I can't remember, so I feel like I'm going to fuck it up. Um, Sean K K K K um, Ko Kyo? I'm so sorry, Sean. Uh, Sean says, glad to see you back and are doing well. I hope that's still true, Sean, after the, the callous butchering of your surname. Um, uh, yes, it is. It is nice to be back. I like I really I did. I sort of got back to work yesterday it being the first and I did some recording and I did some editing and I was like, oh, this is good. This is nice. Um, it reminded me I love this job, which is very, very good. Um, lemon 1087. Was 1087 a good year for lemons? Probably depends where you were. I don't know. Um, and how much you liked lemons. Anyway, Lemon1087 is on a super chat saying, Great to see you, Johnny. While binging old streams, I watched your June Spice Wars stream. Then I watched it again. Then I bought the books. Walk without a rhythm, and you shall attracteth no worms. Hmm. Um, well, I'm glad I got you into Dune, because uh, that's it's it is a potent book series. I'll put it that way. Uh, I haven't played Spice Wars in ages. I should go back to that because I had a bloody good time, even though I lost my army like to the worms quite a bit. Um, Captain Shiny's on a super chat saying, "Welcome back. I wanted to give you one gold piece on your return, but turns out that is ridiculously expensive. So here's money worth half a gram of gold instead. I can't outbid Soth, it seems. Thank you, Captain Shiny. That is really very kind. Um, and if you're a little confused, is a reference to the fact that um, I mentioned already I'm doing D&D streams on Monday um, on twitch.tv forward slash games. Um, I am part of an Idol Champions Presents uh, stream series called Fury of the Black Rose. We're two weeks in, it's going for six weeks in total, and I am playing sweet, sweet feline bimbo, himbo rather, sweet feline himbo, Rust on the Harbour. Um, it has been intriguing, because I'm playing with some people who are A, excellent, but also like in quite a dramatic, serious, high stakes campaign. And then I'm just there being like, a maquette who does not understand money. So it's tonally, I have not been on board with the rest of the party, or rather I've been something of an outlier, but we're getting there. Rust is doing some, some honest to goodness character growth, which is nice. Uh, Daughter of Iris has done a super chat saying, missed you, hope you had a nice break. I did have a nice break. Um, uh, 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 sorry. Um, I did have a nice break. It was bloody lovely, but I'm glad to be back. Um, PJ Buck is on Super Chat saying, Hello, Marble Harbour and I, Marble Harbour. Hope you had a wonderful break. BNB, do crims. Thank you. I will do some crims. I paid my tax, so I won't do tax evasion this year. I just, I, th I think tax dodging is a very funny crime to glibly say that you do. But that's probably going to get me in trouble at some point. Or just get me audited. At which point they'll probably go, oh. You did not do your expenses correctly. We owe you some money, and that'd be nice. So I'll I'll tell you what. PJ Buck says BNB do crims. I will. I'll do some tax dodging. Thanks, PJ Buck. Come at me, HMRC. <laughs> oh, good. We're off to a good start. Um, okay. Cookie Cat ninety four has done a super chat saying if a Norwegian robot analysed a bird, then it's Scandinavian. Scandinavian. It's Scandinavian. 
I butchered that slightly, Cookie Cat 94, but that was actually honestly quite good. Uh, welcome back. It's going to be good to have the streams back to distract from the chaos of dealing with a few too many doctors lately. Oh, that sounds rubbish. I'm very, very sorry. Um, my partner's had a bit of a rough start to the year and we've sort of been in and out of doctor's appointments and that's been shite. So I know the feeling uh, and I hope, yeah, I hope things get cleared up soon, basically. Uh, for Pete's sake, he's done a super chat saying, Johnny is back. Welcome and thank you. I'm still in general enough of... Hmm? I'm still in general enough of your gorgeous Viking self, but in a good way? Johnny is back. Welcome and thank you. Hello, Pete. It's very... Well, sorry. Hello for Pete's sake. It's very nice to be back. I'm still in general enough of your gorgeous Viking self, but in a good way. Yes. I'm not sure what you mean, but I'm pretty sure that's a compliment. So thank you very much. Um, Corvus Albright's done a super chat saying... Lord of the Stream, Return of the Johnny Haiku for Lord of the Stream, Return of the Johnny Haiku time. A throne left empty. At first light on this Thursday. Look to the YouTube. Thank you, Corvus. That is a stonking haiku, and not just because it's Tolkien related. Um, it's very nice to be back. Um, I would, I'm not sure I'd call this chair a throne. Uh, maybe I would? Oh, it sounds like a shit in it, doesn't it? It's like the porcelain throne. And also, fuck the monarchy. Uh, no, we'll move on. It's it's fine. Skull and Boots has done a super chat saying, no game, just super chat, with a little heart heart emoji. Thank you very much. I, I, I would like to play this game, because I think it's going to be good, but we'll get there, I think. Uh, Mark Westendorf has done a super chat saying, was finally able to afford Patreon, and you announced your break the next day. First stream, I've gotten to see you live. Glad you took some time for yourself. Thanks for the years of content and all you do. Thank you, Mark. Um, sorry that I timed my break quite so badly. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't really know I was going to take it until like the 30th of January. Um, I was like 29th when I was talking to a friend and I was like, I'm very tired. And he went, well, when was the last time you took any substantial time off? And I went, oh, and he went, yeah. And that sort of swung it for me. Uh, Brian Shona is on Super Chat saying, hi, Johnny. Glad to see you back. I'm ready to face the horrible chat goblins. I wouldn't say they're horrible chat goblins. They're definitely chat goblins, but I wouldn't say they're horrible. Um... Chris has done a super chat saying, woo, slightly cursed people for the win. See? Exactly. Um, no, it's chat is lovely. You're all very, very nice. Uh, I don't do usernames has done a super sticker. It has um, got uh, the following in it. It's the pair again. Uh, once again, the pair doesn't have a mug of blood, which is great. Um, but a hand mirror and is, a, is sort of like looking into it and doing a little simper. And there's some text that says, thanks for being you. Thanks very much. I don't do usernames. Um... It's it's nice to be me again, which is a nice feeling. Um, so yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, da, da, da. Kira Chevanel has done a super chat saying they're fucking back. Glad you've had a good break. We missed you. Thank you very much. It was a good break, uh, and I missed you all too, to be honest. Um, I don't normally do very well at having time off and staying idle, uh, so I was pleased to manage it this time. But definitely, the last few days of February, I was like, yeah. Um, Michaela Hawkins has done a super chat saying, glad you're back safe. Can I request using the community tab in future when you take an extended hiatus? I was so worried for you by week three with a crying emoji. Yes. Shit. I forgot to use the community tab to tell everyone I was going on break. Sorry. Sorry, Michaela, but I'm okay. Look, here I am. No bags under my eyes. Well, only the customary bags under my eyes. Um... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Shows the Great and Powerful, aka, aka P. Noctum, has done another super chat saying, solely buying this to add to the super chat tsunami. Thanks, Shaz. <laughs> uh, the Best Pin Buy has done, that is a good username. The Best Pin Buy has done a super chat saying, Johnny, welcome back. Hope you had a wonderful time off with one of these as an emoji. I did. It was very, very nice. Um, uh, it is, uh, yeah, it is. Um, sorry, I'm, I saw another chat message which confused me. Um, yeah, it's, it was a bloody lovely break. Thank you very much. And I really like your, um, your username. Bespin's pretty cool. You know, Flying City. It's not cool what happens in Bespin. But, you know, can't win them all. NMS Ninja has done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, uh, nothing much to say, but glad you're back. I've missed your streams. Is the game Dredge on your radar? Brackets. See what I did there? Uh, Dredge is the, um, Dredge is the Ducks deep sea fishing game, isn't it? Uh, yes, I'm very much looking forward to this game. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stream this soon. I thought, I really wanted to stream The Pale Beyond, uh, because 
uh, it looks right up my street. And then next week, because it's now out fully, I thought maybe we'll do um, For the King again and see what a horrible time uh, I have trying to rule over a kingdom in which you're all trying to depose me. I think that would be good fun. Uh, but then Dredge is... Yeah, Dredge is on the radar. I wouldn't worry. Mm. Chris Butler's done a super chat saying... I just spat everywhere. That's not what Chris said. I spat everywhere. As far as I'm aware, Chris Butler has never spat anywhere, ever. Uh, and possibly even doesn't have doesn't have saliva glands. You didn't get it from me, but it's possible Chris Butler cannot salivate at all. For all I know, is that's what I'm saying. Anyway, Chris Butler's super chat reads, Welcome back. Looking forward to seeing more streams and press any Chiodini. Also want to say how much I'm enjoying you and Ellen on the Idol Champions campaign. Thank you very much. It's been a little nerve-wracking, again, because... Rust is so daft, but um, yeah, it's been it's been very very good. Um, right, <laughs> Matt Bircher, who's a very good friend of mine, uh, has done a super chat saying, "Keep Johnny chatting is good game, worth money." Uh, <laughs> thanks, Matt. Uh, I well, it, it was nice playing a Halo with you yesterday. I will play a Halo with you again very soon. Wesley Harkup has done a super chat, but there is no message attached, so I'm just going to check and see. Uh, <laughs> it made me check WhatsApp, and um, he uh, it says, play the game, you uh, C-bomb. I will play it, Wes, I promise. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Uh, T-Fling is on Super Chat saying, welcome back, Johnny. Um, uh, T-Fling is on Super Chat saying, welcome back, Johnny. I hope you had a nice rest, and I'm so happy for the return of the Super Sticker descriptions. Long live the murder pair. Not long live... The Murder Pairs Victims, I suppose. Uh, Lisa Hunter's done a super chat. We're never going to get to this game, are we? Saying to super chat or to allow Johnny to play their game. That is the question, but I want to say I'm glad you're well rested. And well, Johnny, we missed you. Thank you very much, Lisa. That is very, very kind. Um, yeah, it's honestly, it's, I feel a bit giddy about how I don't feel like I'm exhausted all the time. Uh, Leia FK, I hope I said that right, says, Welcome back, Johnny. Uh, uh-oh. Ti adoriamo tesoro. Uh, you returned on my one-year estrogen-based HRT anniversary. I wish you the best. Uh, and I wish the Greek government will reverse the decision for trans people to pay full price for blockers. Yeah, you should be able to... You should, affordable blockers are... Like, that That should be a thing. Um, I hope also that the Greek government uh, reverts that decision. And more importantly, happy one-year anniversary. Um, that's, like, truly wonderful. I hope you are living your best life and... Uh, long may it continue. So thank you again for the super chat. Uh, Nicholas Ninja on Arrow Leaf is on a super chat saying, Guess who's back? Back again. Johnny's back. Tell us, Kenny pal. <laughs> I, try, I, I, told, I tried to tell them all. Um, there are actually a fair few of you watching. I promise I'll get to this game soon. Um, uh, so yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Thunder Cookie's done a super chat. It is the pair. The pair has once again picked up the straw boater and is doing a dance with some confetti in the text that says, you are amazing. And I did not realise he's also got a little cane in his hand. So he's doing like a little jaunty cane guy dance, which is um, impressive if you are a pair. Yep. Ducks piloting a mech drunkenly has done another super chat saying, I don't think you're going to be able to start playing anytime soon, given it's been over 20 minutes already. So have some more money. You're worth it. Thank you, Ducks piloting a mech drunkenly for being part of the problem. Um, no, it's it's really lovely to see this much support, uh, and I, I do hope we all get to play a video game soon. Fingers crossed. Tom Titherington has done a super chat saying, I hope you had a nice time off. Can't wait to see you at PAX East. Yeah, uh, the Ox Venture is coming to PAX East. So we'll be doing a live Ox Venture show on the Saturday. I believe it's in the Dragonfly Theatre at 3pm, uh, and then I am flying home the very next morning. So it, it is a whistle-stop visit to PAX East, but it'll be nice to be back in Boston. Um... Simply Dave MN has a super chat saying, "Welcome to the Let's Watch People Give Money, uh, Give Johnny Money stream." Uh, yeah, it's like I mean, it's nice to be to, for, for this to be a thing without me. Um... No, I was going to say something something crude. Then, thank you, Dave. Uh, Simply Dave MN. It's very nice to see you in chat. Uh, JT Gunners has done a super chat saying. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I got a WhatsApp saying I'm going to start streaming this game and put the link to my stream in a super chat. Well, you can't put links to streams in Super Chats, Matthew. Uh, JT Geddes has done a Super Chat saying, Welcome back, Johnny Boss, on your glorious return to stage and screen. Buried in work, so I'll have a catch-up on VOD. Don't eat too many bodies in the game. Well, maybe one as a treat. 
we may be, I mean, cannibalism is a thing in this game. We don't have to do it. May We may do it. We may not. Let's see. Uh, Ray Shadowheart says, break in chat, deep breath, welcome back. Thank you, Wraith. That's very, very kind. Here comes an unkind super chat from Wesley Harkup that says, Custard Mary bags under the eyes. What the fuck is custard? Oh, Custard Mary. Custard Mary bags under the eyes. I liked that, actually. I was genuinely about to Google who is Custard Mary. Like some sort of weird dairy cryptid. She exists now. Watch out for... Be good, children. Otherwise, Custard Mary will come and rot all of your teeth out of your head. The Kesling has done a super chat saying, I'm glad to see you back and well. I have brought my friend along to watch and enjoy your amazing vibes with a little purple heart emoji. Uh, that is very kind of you. Thank you very much. And hello, friend. I promise you, normally we play video games on these streams. Or we paint Warhammer. Either or. Uh, Daylight Fire has done a super chat saying, I think you are almost at the end of the super chats. Thank you, Daylight Fire, for just adding to the queue a little bit more. Uh, Jeff Durham says, good morning from Texas. Healing from a bruised rib. Thank you for all the content. Uh, that sucks, Jeff. I've had bruised ribs in the past. I tore an intercostal muscle once. It's rubbish. Rib injuries are crap. Um, do continue breathing, because that's a very important part of staying alive. But I hope your your rib heals up very, very soon and very smoothly. And Maya Akane is on a super chat saying, Yay, Johnny Time. I was worried about Watson, but I was delighted to see your Instagram posts. Post, I hope you are all well. Thank you very much. That's very kind. The dog is absolutely fine now, which is great. Well, I say that she sprained her leg yesterday, rolling over like a doofus. But she, So she's limping a little bit today, but like... She's recovered from her surgery. She's cancer-free. She's all good, it's, which is very, very nice. Um, Invisible Goats has done a super chat saying, Hi, I sent 80 emails today. Thanks for entertaining. That is more emails than any one person should have to send. I was going to say ever, but actually over the course of a lifetime, 80 emails is quite manageable. In any working day. I hope you don't have to send that many emails again for a very, very long time. Because uh, that's a lot. Uh, DM Wolf has done a super chat saying, Hey Johnny, it's my wife Tori's birthday today and we're going to a mermaid exhibit at the local aquarium. Can you shout her out for her special day? Absolutely. Tori, happy birthday. Uh, I hope you enjoy the mermaid exhibit. Um, please harpoon one for me and uh, bring it to the Royal Society to prove that they are real and uh, you shall doubtless be knighted. Let me try that again. Tori, happy birthday. Um, I hope you enjoy the local aquarium. Um, that sounds really lovely. Oh, it's going to be people in tails in the tanks. Okay, don't harpoon anyone or anything while you're at the aquarium. I hope you have a very special day and I haven't taken the sheen off it one bit. Can you tell I recently read a book on the journey of Erebus and Terra? Anyway, Hannah Axelson, who never misses, has done a super chat saying, what do you call a bunch of chess players bragging about their game in a hotel lobby? Chestnuts boasting in an open foyer. Brackets, welcome back. A very seasonal joke, but nonetheless very much appreciated, Hannah. Um, it's good to see you back as, as well. It's nice to see you in chat. Nice to see everyone in chat, frankly. Uh, Charlie Robinson is on the Super Chat saying, nice to see you, Johnny. By the way, here's that three quid I owe you from last month, <coughs> plus a little extra. Treat yourself to something nice. Thank you. I will buy a cream egg. I don't know how much they are, but I'll buy one. Brian Mullard has done another Super Chat saying, ha ha, we're getting a package. There we go. That's that's being ticked off the bingo card. Uh, Brian Mullard's Super Chat says, ha 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 ha, I am the problem. It's like a really weird teenage delinquent version of Batman. I am the problem. Um, Maximus Froth has done a super chat saying, Checkmate, Balula. I'm not sure I understand. Um, Freya's done a super chat saying, They're back. We missed you, Johnny, but maybe we just need to improve our aim. <laughs> uh, lots of love from... Uh, oh, Aotearoa. Aotearoa? I'm so sorry that I butchered that pronunciation. I'm sure it's a lovely place. Uh, in New Zealand, it looks like. Um, Neo Hamilton has done a super chat. Bloody hell. Saying, just got off work, got my snacks, and I'm just in time to join this stream. Glad to see everyone else as excited as me. Um, yeah, it's like, <laughs> this is just never going to end, is it? Um, I'm going to try and speed up. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm glad everyone's excited. Hopefully, eventually, we'll play a video game. Jenny Dunn has done a super chat saying, here's to the Keep Johnny Talking Fund with a smiley face. Jenny, you're going on my list. Dogzark has done a super chat saying you can start playing the game when we are done telling you how much we love you, brackets platonically. This That sounds like my worst nightmare. I hate compliments. 
I've, I feel like I've grown a lot in terms of receiving them. Um, I just want to play a game about trying to survive in the polar wastes. Um, some guy sitting down is on Super Chat saying, just because I missed you. Big hug to you, Johnny. I really missed you. Now I'm going to watch from the beginning. You had me a bit worried. I am fine. I'm sorry I didn't put anything in the... Um, in the uh, da, 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 uh, community tab, I was just taking some time off because I was exhausted. Uh, I am back now. Shocking Squirrels done a super chat saying, I was wondering where you've been and was slightly worried. Glad to see you back. Sending lots of love. Uh, sorry. Yes. I was just taking a, a little break because I was very tired. I forgot to tell people on YouTube, which is daft because this is where all of my work goes. But uh, that's just how I did it. Um Chris Rakowski has done another super chat saying just wanted to sneak this in before Johnny started. <sighs> Thank you very much, Chris Rakowski. Amicus has done a super chat saying, yay, you are back. You were missed. Are you better? I am. I have slept. I've got new glasses. Um, just, yeah, generally speaking, doing a whole lot better. Thank you very much. Adam Schofield is on a super chat saying, welcome back, Johnny. I'm in the process of ugh, moving house on top of school work and everything else. And this is proving difficult. Happy to have you help me through the whole thing. You're the best. Moving house is one of the worst things a person can be put through, I think. So you have, uh, my sol solidarity, um, because I, oh God, I hate doing it. Um, so yeah, I hope it all goes well. And you enjoy being in the new place and just getting a chance to breathe. EJ's done a super chat saying cream eggs now cost one pound each. I you um, a pound each? Well, I suppose that's about par with other chocolate bars. I think I'm not sure. Um, an idiot with a workshop says it's currently snowing like a Sean Beam voice bastard. So I'm probably not going to work today. Glad you're feeling better. Missed you. Um, I'm. I hope the snow. Uh, well, I hope you. I hope you get a day off work and you enjoy the rest. But uh, I also hope the snow isn't too disruptive. Um, and thank you very much. It is nice to be back. I am feeling better. Simply Dave Amen has done another super chat saying, "No need to read this one out. I've already started, so I'll finish. Got to go and do errands, but I'm leaving you on to keep my guinea pigs, Prudence, Frisky, and the Darkness company. Incredible names for guinea pigs." Um, Let's teach them some terrible, terrible words. Kelsey Burns is on a super chat saying, I don't have much to add to the conversation other than that I too am excited that you're back. Here's more money to delay you. Um, Mephi to go in their super chat has done a, a taken a different tack saying, get on with it. I'm trying, Mephi, I promise. Danila Dragon is on a, another super chat saying, delaying you so Thunder Cookie can finish her soup. Um... um CookieCat94 is on Super Chat saying, Did you hear that the Air Force has just bought a bunch of copies of The Little Mermaid on DVD? Rumour has it they're preparing for an aerial assault. Fucking hell. That... Hmm. Thanks, CookieCat94. That was lovely. Uh, Victorina has done a big old Super Chat. That's massive. Saying, My husband is DM Wolf and quite a lovable idiot. Haha. <laughs> there will be no harpooning of mermaids as far as I know. Also, I once referred to Aquarium as Ocean Zoo. So now that's what I call it. Catch you all later on VOD. Enjoy whatever you end up doing. I did not write... Ah, okay. Oh, wait. So it's Victorina. Victorina. Um, <laughs> Ocean Zoo is the best. Why don't they call it that in general? Aquarium should be Ocean Zoo. I suppose they have freshwater fish there. That's not for me to sort out. That's for the marine boffins to sort out. Aquarium, Ocean Zoo. Perfect. Best name. Mr. Team Corvette, hello. Has done Super Chat saying it is so bloody wonderful to see you back. Here's a little more for the pear fund. Thank you. I had, what did I have recently? I had, oh, I had some pear juice in a cafe in York and it was brilliant. Uh, Abadosian Chulak 2 has done a Super Chat saying looking great after your break, Johnny, which just goes to show the problem is us. No comment, but thank you for the Super Chat. Amicus has done another Super Chat saying also next time you need a break, you should still get paid for Discord, etc. Uh, everyone deserves a vacation, especially our favourite NB YouTuber. That is very kind. Thank you very much. Um, Weekend Minis has done a Super Chat saying, hi, Johnny, welcome back. Lots of love from my family. Uh, EJ and I just bought cream eggs this morning for $1.99 plus 5% general sales tax. General sales tax gets me every single time. I get to the till and they're like, hi, this is more than you thought it was going to be. And I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, Doc Zock, meanwhile, has uh, done a super sticker. The super sticker is of a pear. The pear has arms, legs and a face and it's giving a massive thumb up. Matt Willis has done a super chat saying, I'm getting married next month. Do you have any tips for TTRPGs to play with my future husband? Love you, Johnny, and welcome home. Um, I would be delighted to answer the, that question as I boot up the Pale Beyond. We made it, everyone. There should be some soft piano music going on underneath my ramblings. Um, uh, 
and then we're going to get to this game. I'm going to explain what it is. Um, uh, oh, fuck. Vivian Leong has done a super chat saying, I can't remember the B joke. Any chance you could refresh my memory? Okay, I promise I will tell the B joke before the end of this stream. I promise. We're going to get into the game and we'll do the B joke in a bit. Um, Katronica has done a super chat saying, If aquariums are water zoos, then they have fish out the wazoo. <laughs> Amazing, brilliant, perfect. Um, okay. In Felix Raw says, ooh, soft piano music, and Mel says, no piano music. Maybe you can hear that now. According to my OBS, there's sound coming through. Uh, Vulpis Vulpix has done a super chat saying, always happy to catch you live, finally started a new job, a lovely local screen printing shop. Here's to starting a new career. That sounds bloody wonderful. I love screen printing. It's great. I'm bad at it, but I find it fascinating. So, The Pale Beyond is a game that is clearly like, is a, yes, piano, but also static. Oh wait, hang on a minute. If I do that, and then that in my ears, that should be a bit better. It might just be a bit low, because I need to not blow my own ears out. So, um, Rito Sin says, so what sort of game is this? It's a great question. It's kind of like a survival game. Um, but it's kind of very much inspired by things like AMC's The Terror, or in truth, the journey that Terror and Erebus made to try and find the Northwest Passage um, in the 19th century. Um, it's a game where we're basically going to be frozen in to polar ice and we'll be trying to survive. It is... I, I don't know actually, I've not played it. So we'll see. Chris Rakowski's done a super chat saying, has Thunder, has Thunder Cookie finished their soup yet? Stop stalling for soup. Soup waits for no video game. Wait, video game waits for no soup. And Daylight Fire is on a super chat saying, okay, now you have reached the end of the super chats. Right, new game. Fucking hell. Start a new expedition. Here we go. Ooh, Eric White's done a super chat, but it's blank. Thank you, Eric. Oh, the air bees cold. Oh, I need to move my face. Oh, the airs be oh, oh the air bees cold, of flake and white, as a sailor begs their pledge. Uh to the ice they'll pray that leads reveal. Out in the ice they'll stake a claim, or that in the dark they'll brace themselves. To the ice they'll pray that leads reveal. Leads um are like channels in pack ice that ships can navigate through. It's the way to get through the pack, basically. So we'll say that. To the ice they'll pray that leads reveal some charted course ahead. Of homes they'll dream, to the souls around, of glory found. To the souls around, it's sort of about fellowship, a, a polar exploration I, I like to think. That might be too loud now. I'm going to turn it down a touch, it's quite loud in my ears. Thunder Cookie's done a super chat saying, soup is done and served. Thanks lovely Skelly Pals and lovely Johnny, you're all the best. I hope your soup was delicious. And Cortash has done a super chat saying, I've sadly been too busy at work, working for my promotions and raises. I don't know what I missed and I hope you're doing alright. Thanks for being awesome. I was away for a month, so I wouldn't even worry about it. Okay, here we go. To the souls around. To the souls around them, shielding fear, dividing up their dread. A hunger draws the desperate here. It's one that can't be fed. Such lonely souls need lead. It's calling souls dispread. Well, fuck dispread, because that's a rubbish end to a line. Um, it's one that can't be fed. Such lonely souls need lead. Sure, leadership, survival, companionship. Such lonely souls need lead. What will ye do when steel hearts break and courage does abscond? I'll lead these souls to help the gods. I'll do what must be done indeed. I'll learn to live a life out here. I'll do what must be done indeed. Out in the pale beyond. Huge, especially from the music, huge vibes of the terror season one. Uh, if you've not seen the terror, it is one of the most phenomenal series I've ever, ever seen in my life. It's based on Dan Simmons' book of the same name. Uh, and it's just great. Very violent and uh, horrific. So it's a hard watch, but it's great. Emma Benton says, No one told me there would be poetry. Suck it up, Emma. You love poems, maybe. It's nice to see you, Emma. I hope you're all right. Begin your journey. Sarah Wilkins says, Is Preston Kiadini back this weekend? You bet it is. 
I recorded um, yesterday. Um, and it's a fun one, I think. <clears throat> crew wanted. Able-bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return, glory to be had in the event of success. Address, Overleaf. Emma Benton says, I'm largely indifferent to poetry. Lol. There you go. AJ says, oh yeah, watch the terror. It's terrifying. Bloody is. Um, I rewatch it every winter and it's just, it's incredible. Right. You're alone in the office. The tea in your hand has long since gone cold. Either it's perfectly adequate or I'd prefer coffee. It's perfectly adequate. It's perfectly adequate. Marissa J says, is this Scott's trip to the Antarctic? Um, I don't know if it's really specifying which one it's sort of based off. I think it's sort of fictionalised, but we'll see. Looking around the room, you can make out a collection of military books. On the desk is a ship in a bottle. A metronome ticks away steadily. It's harmless. It's insufferable. Or, I find it rather calming. <laughs> Matt Bircher says, it's perfectly adequate. Uh, I find it rather calming. Do I find it rather calming? Let's all sit with a metronome for a second. And a, think about cold tea. No. Oh, I don't actually hate it. I broke through after a second. I find it rather calming. I find it rather calming. The dedicated rhythm soothes the senses. Oh, it stops. Keep waiting. You hear footsteps climbing the stairs that brought you here. Do we take a seat or remain standing? We shall remain standing. Because I don't know about you, but if I'm waiting for someone and I'm sat in a chair and they come in, I like rocket to my feet as if I've been caught doing something I, I shouldn't have. So let's remain standing. Um, Cyborg Penguin's on a super chat saying, Welcome back, Johnny. Glad to hear you enjoyed your break. Also, congrats to chat for 30 plus minutes of super chats. Thank you, Cyborg Penguin. And yes, well done, chat. That was long. Sarah Wilkins says that's slightly freaky, actually. Yeah, it is. I So I played this game for like two minutes yesterday to make sure it ran on my PC. And I clicked It's Insufferable the first time. And when you try to stop the metronome, the needle falls off and you put it in your pocket. And I was like, oh, God. So I, I kind of wanted to see. Also, I didn't hate the metronome today. But it is eerie that it stopped. Anyway, the door behind you swings open. Neo Hamilton says, I would sit. Staying standing makes me worry I look impatient. Interesting. But I feel like we're in like a naval officer's office. Officers is, is. So we need to seem attentive. I don't know. The captain bounds past you to the other side of the desk like a greyhound. Do have all of your teeth. <laughs> Sorry? I've enough to get by. Or open mouth. Let's open mouth. Um, John Rice has done a super chat saying, Was Bromine, the ancient snow hermit in Fast and the Furious, meant to be Bismuth's brother? He mentions a sister, and they are both Transformers. Maybe, John. Maybe. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, open mouth! Captain Shiny says, Are we a wrong horse? Let's open that mouth. Nah. You bear your teeth to the man. Good. Can never be too careful. The captain sits down. It's the little things you can lose people to. Are you speaking from experience? I've not had scurvy before, or you're late. Are you speaking from experience? I've not had scurvy before. Let's just say that. I've not had scurvy before, if that's what you're asking, says me, who's apparently called Shaw. Sure, why not? There's more things to worry about than just scurvy. How many people have died under your supervision? None? More than I'd care to admit, or I don't appreciate this line of questioning. Serenity Moon 1976 says, Need all your teeth to eat the shoe leather. Ah, I see you've played knifey shoey before. Hmm. Hmm. 
None, more than I'd care to admit, or I don't appreciate this line of questioning. I don't appreciate this line of questioning. I don't appreciate this line of questioning. You will, when you're on the ice. Smoking a pipe. Smoking is bad for you, everybody. He see oh my, it does look good though when he does it. He seems to really be enjoying that. <sighs> I'm Captain Hunt. Shaw, sure, the pleasure is mine, Robin Shaw. On your desk. Which ship is that? I'm saying that. That's back. That's yeah. On your desk. What ship is that? <laughs> oh, this detailed, isn't she? Incredibly. I don't get it, or it's a bit pessimistic. Let's just say incredibly. Incredibly? Kortash has done a super chat saying, after Cyborg super chat, i got to keep it going, spread the love, and remember that no matter what happens, you're all lovely people. Have a good day. Thank you, Kortash. That's very nice. Incredibly? He seems very proud of that ship in a bottle. <laughs> Hannah Axelson says, died is such a harsh term. I prefer redistributed as provisions. <laughs> An old sailor superstition. Repercussion says, are the buildings outside identifiable? Uh, not to... I mean... We could be in the Royal, the old Royal Naval College in Greenwich in London, but also look at this atlas here. I mean, part of it's obscure by my face, but that does not look like Earth to me. An old sailor superstition, says Hunt. I hope you weren't waiting too long. It's fine. Is this a waste of my time, or I'm told it's worth the wait? I'm told it. I'm told it's worth the wait. What a rakish thing we're saying. I'm told it's worth the wait. Dot dot dot. Good. There's been a lot of candidates. Some good, some bad. Interesting mix. I'm sure you understand the need for discretion. The advert said there was glory to be had. It all seems a bit convoluted for a sailing job. Or keep listening. Let's keep listening. Lisa Shaw says, Hey, it's my surname. I hope I do your surname proud, Lisa. Apparently this game is quite hard, so we'll see. Months of darkness. Low wages. Slim chance of safe return. That didn't deter you, did it? Quite the opposite, it's why I'm here. Good work is hard to come by these days, or it's to be expected, surely. Maybe not the low wages. But I'm not saying quite the opposite is why I'm here. I bloody love low wages and not seeing the sun. It's to be expected, surely. It's to be expected, surely. I thought it blunt, but it's proven remarkable at weeding out the weak and the pretend. I have a few questions. First, he looks down at his list of questions. Were you born a landlubber or a sea dog? Okay, all right, here we go. This is where things, I think, are going to matter to the story. So, I think we'll start a poll. Alex Simpkins is on Super Chat saying, Please have some monies. I've just started playing Scum and Villainy as a character that's a mix between Egbert and Casimir. So thank you for introducing to me to the Forged in the Dark system. You're very welcome, Alex. That sounds like a handful to play. Bloody hell. Right. Start a poll. Uh... We are from... Actually, hang on. You know what? I've got a strong opinion about this one. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm from the city. The ocean, same as yourself. Or mixed. If I knew, I'd tell you. I've been all over. The, the ocean. The ocean. Same as yourself. Saltborn. <sighs> the ocean. Same as yourself. I'm salt, born and bred. Military experience. Uh, all right. Now we'll ask. Now we'll ask. Start a poll. Oh, that's gonna take. It's gonna take forever though. Mm. Colonial. No, not picking that one. Royal Admiralty. Merchant sailed the merchant lines twelve years. Or criminal only evading them. Merchant. Oh, but Reese says lovely crimes. Lovely crimes. Criminal only evading them. Ha! Says Hunt. That went down well. Uh, Kimberly Allen's on a super chat saying, I can't stick around because of work, but I'm glad you're back and feeling well, Johnny. Good luck on your polar journey, and I hope your future is full of happy days. Thank you. 
in in this game, I don't think it is, but in real life, hopefully, um, I hope. Uh, yeah, I hope work is okay, and um, if you're watching this on VOD in the future, hello from the past! Right, ha! Honesty is good. So you've skirted the law before, then? Is that a problem? That's behind me. Is this honest work? Is that a problem? Is that a problem? If everyone I hired had a clean record, I wouldn't have a crew at all. AJ says he gave a jolly old guffaw. Did look like a jolly old guffaw, that. Lovely crimes. Have you ever fired a weapon? Yes. Yes. Have you ever killed a man, directly or otherwise? What a question. Directly or otherwise? Hmm. 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 Benny42 says, perhaps. Yeah, so which obviously means yes. Haywire says, pity we can't mention we harpooned a mermaid that one time. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I see. Oh, he didn't like that one as much. You're not married, are you? Of course not. <laughs> Happily. That's irrelevant. That is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. Exploration is a dangerous profession. You must understand the risk you're putting yourself in. Mm. Mm. I'm not married. Happy Bob has done a super chat saying, I am once again thanking you for keeping me laughing and smiling when I needed it. It's been a rough few months. You're awesome. Um, thank you very much, Happy Bob. I hope you're doing all right. Um, apologies for the extended absence, but I needed it. Hunt says, you better not have a death wish. Of course, the only two states of being, death wish and married. One must believe their return to justify leaving in the first place. That's fair. It's kind of like when you go, go outside in the winter and you're like, oh, it's going to be really cold. Best way to get yourself out there is to think about how lovely it's going to be to come back into the warm. Or vice versa in the summer. If it's like, it's so fucking hot out there, it's going to be awful. It'll be like, yeah, but think about how cool it'll be when I get home. Any lesson you're doing yourself a disservice, let him continue. Dot, dot, dot. We're here to find the ship in that bottle. Ooh. The Viscount. Heard of it? Yes, no, enlighten me, or this is some kind of joke, right? <laughs> Alex Simkin says, found it, it's in the bottle. <laughs> oh, lots of people are making the same joke. Very good. Um, let's say no, enlighten me. He's because I want to know. I want to want him to say no, enlighten me. He clears his throat. Five years ago, she set sail on a research expedition towards the dead peninsula. Well, there's your first mistake. They were trying to find and study the absolute magnetic south. Now, the search for magnetic south was fascinating. And Erebus and Terra were both there. Um, and it was uh, James Clark Ross who tried to find it. He was the first one to discover the Antarctic uh, continent. But there was a massive wall of ice that prevented him getting through. In fact, nobody would be able to reach land for more than 50 years and find Magnetic South. So he gave it a good go. Anyway, Bo Furlong's on a super chat saying the only two states of being are married and death wish. Johnny Chiodini, 2023. I stand by it. Sky the Nerd says Erebus. Isn't that a thing in Hades? Yes. Erebus is like the lowest depths of the underworld. Um, Erebus was originally built as a warship. Um, in fact, sorry, I'm going to go off on one about this. The Erebus was built as a warship um, and was built as a mortar ship, which is why they then sent it on polar expeditions, because it had a reinforced hull that could help it break through the ice. But um, in uh, it, it was involved in the shelling of one particular place in America, I can't remember what, during the Revolutionary War, and it was so, like, it, they basically they bombed this city from the sea so fucking hard that it inspired the song uh, the Red... The, the, Star Spangled Banner, 
the rocket's red flame is a reference to the mortars being fired from Erebus when it was a warship before it got turned into a discovery ship, helped find Antarctica, and then got lost in the fucking Northwest Passage and wasn't found again until like 10 years ago. It is fascinating. Bloody, bloody love Erebus and Terra. Fort McHenry. Thank you very much, King Cartoffel. That's what they were. That's what they were mortaring. Anyway, right. Um, Emma Benton says, "Ah, yes, the rocket's red glare." <laughs> anyway, right, 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 right. Um, they were trying to find and study the absolute magnetic south. If they found it, I might have heard of them. Not saying that. Did they? Viscount. Strange name for a ship. Let's say that. Viscount. Strange name for a ship. Um, if you want to read more on Erebus and Terror, Michael Palin has uh, a book just called Erebus, the Story of a Ship. It's a great account. It's really, really good. Um, Viscount. Strange name for a ship. They can't all be named for dukes and princes. Viscount wasn't always hereditary. was an earned title once. Admirals certainly love their metaphors. Oh, because you're earning something. Oh, I like it. Freya's done a super chat saying, There's nothing between us and the Antarctic waste but the occasional penguin, so we feel the bite of the wind any time there's a southerly. Oof. Also should have said, they're back. We'll do better. No, Freya, that was a very interesting super chat. Never considered that New Zealand might get bloody cold every time there's a southerly. Oh, also, one more thing that I learned from um, Palin's book on Erebus. Um... Uh, Sir James Clark Ross was sailing to try and find like the Antarctic continent and was very, very worried that two explorers had gone before him. One of them was an American who was like, I've found all of this fucking stuff. And then Sir James Clark Ross went down and was like, the landmass that he says is here is not here. He's mistaken clouds for mountains. And he was so petty about it, he deliberately charted his course through the mountain range to be like, oh, great island, everybody. I sailed through it. Anyway, that's not why I wanted to talk about this. It's because Freya mentioned penguins. There was a French explorer um, who was like, do... Oh, I can't remember his name now. Um, but he went and saw a peninsula, I think it was, a landmass, that he named for his wife. Now, that name hasn't really stuck. Uh, so the peninsula isn't really known by his wife's first name. But I'll tell you what fucking is. The Adélie Penguin. This guy was married to a woman named, named Adaly. He found a landmass and was like, I'm going to name that after my wife. And history went, all right, these penguins are now named after your wife. So that's why all the daily penguins have a French accent. That is canon. Um, admirals certainly love their metaphors, anyway. Almost as much as their medals. He trails off. Anyway, the point is she never came back. Her last known location was 200 miles south of land presumed lost to the ice. This is beginning to sound like a suicide mission. Five years is a bit late for a rescue operation. They're probably dead, and we're supposed to be chasing this ship. Let's just be realistic. Five years is a bit late for a rescue operation. They're probably dead. Um, TransGamerNerd27 is on Super Chat saying, Hi Johnny, I'm, jo I'm joining for my lunch. I have personal news and a joke. Which do you want first? Um, personal news first, joke second. Please, TransGamerNerd27. Alex Simpkins on another super chat saying, an interesting fact that I think needs sharing. Historians now believe the Maori discovered Antarctica in the early 7th century. Holy shit. That is extremely cool. Good on them. Alive or not, their research is supposedly of extreme importance. Yeah, the craze for magnetic north and south and the magnetic lines of the Earth, um, especially during like the 18th century, was... People were like in fever pitch for it because it would really help with navigation and basically trade routes. Um, and we're supposed to be chasing that research. I'm going to need more than rumours about lost ships if I'm putting my life at risk. Or, all right, you have my importance. Uh, you have my attention. Transgamer Nerd says, I file my paper for my legal name change today. I will legally be Jessica in about three weeks. Congratulations, Jessica. That's fucking amazing. Um, I hope it all comes through very, very swiftly. Now a joke, please. <laughs> um, okay. You have my attention. Hmm. The captain smiles. Here's what we do know. Not one person or thing 
has been heard from the Viscount since it first left port. So we're chasing ghosts then. Selena Steele has done Super Chat saying, I've just joined. Have I missed anything important? This man has magnificent facial hair, by the way. Uh, it was about 35 minutes of Super Chats, and now we're just being interviewed by this man, Captain Hunt, uh, to go looking for a missing ship called the Viscount. You're basically caught up. Also, uh, I believe this style of facial hair is called uh, the Friendly Mutton Chops, because they meet in the middle. They shake hands as a moustache. So we're chasing ghosts, then. Maybe it's a myth. Maybe it isn't. I can assure you the money is real. Those with more money than sense want that old ship. That's the job. If, you, if I don't pick the first mate, somebody else will, and, well, my judge of character's gotten me this far. Wink! Ducks piloting a mech drunkenly on a super chat, saying more money for one of my favourite YouTubers. Any chance you'll play Hi-Fi Rush? Such a surprisingly good game, and it has a streamer mode. Um, I am bad at rhythm games, but um, I'll probably give it a go. Sure, why not? Sod it. Right, what of our crew, what of our ship, and who's financing all this? What of our crew, what of our sh what a part of the ship, part of the crew. What of our own ship? We'll be travelling on board the Temperance. She's a beauty, Greenwood. Generational. Not many like it left these days. Oh, Johann Schroeder says, I know this style of facial hair is the Bismarck. Hmm. The more you know. Um, Sarath uh, Srikumar, Srikuma, I hope I said that right, sorry, says, Johnny, are you excited about The Last Jedi 2? Uh, oh, um, Fallen Jedi, Fallen Order 2, more Jedi have fallen over, whatever it's called. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. I enjoyed playing the first one. The Viscount and the Temperance, their sister ships. Well, you know what they say, if you've lost one ship, send an identical ship. And it will surely overcome the obstacles that the first one came up against. Oh, Transgamer Nerd 27 did a joke. Have you heard the one about the knight, the rogue, and the ranger who were all in a relationship? It was a polyarmory. Genuinely very good. I liked that a lot. Um, mm, 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 mm. John Keel has done a big old super chat saying, had an absolutely wonderful time playing Quest GM'd by my favourite GM, Johnny. This is honestly the least you deserve for being such a great GM slash person. It's great to have you back. It's great to be back. And thank you very much for joining for a bloody delightful game of Quest. Um, 45 minutes is not long enough to run a, a, a decent game. But, well, no, it was a decent game. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, right. Uh, Matthew83 is on Super Chat saying, read, uh, read today that you can sail from the UK to New Zealand in a straight line via Antarctica, and now I don't know what to believe. Thanks for all you do. Bloody hell. I did not know that, Matthew. It was interesting. Uh, right, anyway, we're finding out about the Viscount. Built together, sent out into this world to die alone. <laughs> you seem to love metaphor yourself. What does that matter? Or superstition gets people killed. Uh, you seem to love metaphor yourself. Seems to love metaphor yourself. Indeed. Perhaps that makes me a hypocrite. But I like to think one calls out for the other. The captain looks at the bottled ship. So what do you think? It's worth it if there's a chance anyone's alive. Sounds like you'll need all the help you can get. It's not much it's not that much to go on. It's worth it if there's a chance no, they're all dead. It's not that much to go on. It's not that much to go on. It isn't. It's not that much to go on. No, it isn't. The captain checks his watch. Anyway, I think I've heard enough. The captain stands up. We leave in a month. Welcome aboard, Shaw. Hey! Dot, dot, dot. Proverbially speaking. Don't you need more information? You're not what I expected. Or so I have the job. You're not what I expected. No, not what I expected. And what did you expect? We're more than our mistakes, Robin. Robin Shaw. Let people surprise you. I'll see you on the temperance. The captain makes his way to the door and you follow. Kerchonk. Corvus Albright says, Stolen joke from Transgamer Nerd 27. 
haiku for stolen joke from Trans Gamer Nerd 27, haiku time. Budding relations. Night Rogue Ranger Paladin. Polyarmory. Very good. Right. You arrive at the docks a month to the day. Before you lies a ship. The letter on its the letters on its side read Temperance. Approach the Temperance. We're off, everybody. Or oh, we will be. You walk the cobble to the boarding ramp. Beside is a sharply dressed man overseeing the overseeing the loading of the cargo. They come running just as fast as they can. Every girl crazy about a sharply dressed man. Um, oh, I like these boats. Look, they look like Viking longships. Anyway, speak to the man. He turns to you with a stern expression. You can feel his eyes assessing you. Salt barn! He's quick to inspect you for ink. Another sailor for the fold. Mid-deck with the others. I'm Robin, I'm Robin Shaw. Or I could offer a handshake. Address me properly. I'm the first mate of this ship. I'm going to say I'm Robin Shaw. I'm Robin Shaw! Oh, of course. That would make you the captain's choice for first mate, correct? The captain's choice? What do you mean the captain's choice? I either am first mate or I'm not first mate. I'm Mr. Templeton. I shall be operating as Chief Science Officer on this expedition. I'm also the incumbent representative of our benefactor. Do, however, consider myself and my team at you and the captain's disposal. Yes! What did you specialise in? Mr. Templeton, I look forward to working together, or I'm fairly certain we're all disposable. What did you specialise in? I'm curious, and not that rude. What did you specialise in? Applied botany. No, not much use for a botanist on the ice, is there? Well, that's reassuring. Mr. Templeton, I look forward to working together. I expect you to be up for the task, says Templeton. Some of the layabouts Hunt hired are questionable, at least. No doubt I needn't inform you of your duties. You're second only to Captain Hunt himself. Neo Hamilton says, oh, Templeton is going to be a dick. I can sense it. He looks like a classic thin and very rude middle-aged man character, doesn't he? Um, Haywire says, I'm sensing some Paul Bettany vibes from this guy for some reason. Oh my god, yeah. Bloody hell. Uh, right. I must warn you, you have quite the task ahead. The rabble I've spent the afternoon sorting are the same that you'll have to whip into shape. Punctuality, schedule, a strict adherence is what we need if this expedition is to succeed. I expect you to be the organised sort. You would not have been assigned to the role otherwise. Okay, well, I need to move my face. Where do I live? Where do I live? Shall I become smaller? No, there's going to be more text. I'll go here? I'll go here. I'll go here. Hopefully that'll be alright. Ajax done a super chat saying, Trans Gamer Nerd reminded me that I wanted to change the name I present to the wider world instead of my government name. Congrats on your milestone. Here, here. And good luck on your own journey with that, Ajax. I hope it goes all right. Sorry, one sec. Okie dokie. I expect you to be the organised sort. You would not have been assigned the role otherwise. I likely have more in common with the crew than I do yourself, Mr. Templeton. No. I doubt there will be much issue. No. You speak like you're in charge. You speak like you're in charge. You speak like you're in charge. I speak from a source of knowledge. Do not mistake it for a source of arrogance, Officer Shaw. Fucking hell, alright. Bored when you're ready. He's like Grand Moff Tarkin. You'll make bored when ready. And when you find yourself needing a scientist, we can try this again. Oh, I came up short there, didn't I? Shit. Okie dokie. So, here's the temperature. It's minus 10 degrees centigrade, which is cold, because zero is freezing, for those of you who are fans of Fahrenheit. Um, this is, seems to be some dial showing how much daylight we get in 24 hours versus night time. I expect that to change as we head north. It's week zero, and it's the morning. A young Maine! The city? Let's look at the city. You'll be gone for quite a while. It'll be some time before you see the city again. A young man. A young man stands at the ramp, stealing himself for the journey ahead. Hesitantly, he begins to drag his feet up the ramp and onto the ship. Well, that sounds encouraging, doesn't it? 
Anonymous says, aren't you heading south? Yes, I am. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yes, heading south. Right. Okay. Amicus has done a super chat saying, glad I got to catch you live, I think for the first time. But I have to go, so I will see you play this uh, in the future. Thanks for joining us, Amicus. Um, I hope whatever it is you're going on to do is a delight. And thank you again for the super chat. Um, do 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 do. Right. Griffin Rayner says we could use more games with space whales. Disagree. Okay, the Temperance. Hunt's description of the ship was accurate. Oh, look at this, though. Near identical to the Viscount, barring some modern additions that might be a reference to this chimney here because they retrofitted steam engines to Erebus and Terra so that they could chug along through the ice. They got, I think, about four horsepower out of it. No, four knots. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Set sail! Here we go, everybody! To adventure! It's going to be fine! Week one. One week on the Temperance. The Pale Be... The Pale Beyond! quite loud now, isn't it? Um, Thuri Weaver's done a super chat saying, heading back to the start as I arrived where I meant to, but have Feb fee and extra because I got a huge promotion at work. Can't spend the whole raise on Warhammer, so I thought I'd share with the person who's responsible. Thank you very much, Thuri Weaver. That's very, very kind. Um, and congrats on the huge promotion at work. That's huge by your own definition. Um, just so you know, uh, the, the gameplay doesn't start until like over half an hour. <laughs> into the stream. Uh, right. It's been a month. For fuck. Okay. Oh, wait, look, 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 look. So that's the end of our... God, I'm going to have to keep moving my face. I'm going to put myself here and just hope that works. Um, mm -mm -mm. First mate, sure. Personal log. It's been one month since I signed on and one week since we've set sail aboard the Temperance. I'm told the waters will get warmer as we pass the hemisphere before they turn colder. I want to know, I do want to know who's paying for this. I can't help but wonder who's footing the bill for all this. Certainly not the captain. I should investigate further. It's none of my business or the crew, however. I should investigate further. I te intend to investigate further. The Temperance? I've never been on a ship like this before. She's magnificent, it's seaworthy, or it's an abomination. Let's... Right, if I go... Where's the midpoint? Let's just put me... Let's put me there. That will do. Um, she's magnificent. It's seaworthy. It's an abomination. Paul Harris says abomination. All right, Paul, let's do it. It's an abomination. One of the finest ships of its day, cauterized and mangled with iron and roaring machinery. Knew it. I knew they'd retrofitted that engine. Uh, historic carvings line the wood, now desecrated with veins of oil and pipe. An abomination, but for the coming weeks, my home. As for its master, he's mostly kept to his quarters so far. I need to know if I can trust Captain Hunt. I'm not sure what to make of our leader, or I trust the captain. I do, I personally do kind of trust him. <laughs> Mr. Tom for the win says, there's no place like abomination. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Tom for the win. I hope you're well. Um, oh, bloody hell. I trust the captain. Let's say we trust him. Let's say we trust him. The captain seems a trustworthy sort. Although he is kept to his quarters so far, which is weird. Anyway. Experience alone justifies his position. There aren't many who make out the other end of naval military service with all their limbs, let alone his vigour. I've heard the rumours 
very intrigued by that. It's good to know what the crew are saying. I've heard the rumours. Drinking, desertion. There's probably a good reason he's dressed in antiques. Perhaps I'm too quick to judge. I mustn't let my guard down or I do find myself warming to the man. I mean, I just said I trust him. Hmm. I mustn't let my guard down. Enigmatic indeed. I mustn't let my guard down. As for the rest of the crew... There are now 22 of us, including the captain. Our next port will be our last before we enter the ice to pick up the remaining four members of the crew, the scouting team. Hunt is also keen to work out a deal on a pack of sledding dogs. The crew are a strange lot. Eclectic as the ship itself. Sign off. One of Hunt's sailors approaches. Captain wants you at the elm says Joe. I'll head there now. I'll head there now. He leaves. Alright, see you Joe. Join Hunt at the helm. Foxhole. Let's go to the foxhole. The, the foxhole door appears to be locked. Foxhole, one of the fun words uh, aboard a ship where you just don't say it how it's written. Foxhole door appears to be locked. Let's have a look at the crow's nest. The crow's nest currently stands unoccupied. The scouting team are expected to join at next port. Yes, that makes fair. Makes, makes, it, uh, that sounds fair. There we go. That makes sense. That sounds fair. There we go. Join Hunt at the helm. You ascend the stairs to the stern and find the old captain manning the helm of the ship. Ah, Robin! Lovely day for it, isn't it? Don't know, that's just what he sounds like when he's at sea, apparently. Don't you have a helmsman to do that for you? One of your lackeys summoned me. It is indeed, Captain. We've been a straight shooter with the Captain so far. So, don't you have a helmsman to do that for you? Of course I do, but it's good to keep the old skills sharp. Yep, fair. Never know when you're going to have to get your hand dirty. He thinks for a moment before stepping aside and stretching out a wrinkled hand. Alyssa says, sorry, it's not said for castle? It's not, it's the foxhole. Weird, right? Here, why don't you have a try? Criminal! You should take advantage of calm waters for once. I imagine you didn't see many in your past line of work. Take the wheel... Are you sure? I really have other duties to be attending to. We'll be fine. Let's take the wheel. You grip the wheel of the ship and feel the weight of the waves in your arms. Use right mouse button to pan around. The memory in your muscles rear themselves as you begin to move in time with the ship and the wind. This is nice. I like this game. <laughs> Neck on the kitty says, do a donut! <laughs> easy, says Hunt. Or possibly, easy. Paul Harris says, try Chumley for pronunciation. There you go, I did. There you have it, says Hunt. The captain pats you on the back. Fantastic. Now try to get a sense of where we are. Get some perspective. You provide the food, I'll provide the perspective. Peaceful, isn't it? Says Hunt. Oh, the ocean is big and really fucking scary. Diddly diddy 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 diddy. Victoria Cummings says, do a barrel roll. Snow Ninja Sandcat says, there's water everywhere. Where is all the ice? Well, it says that it's the water's getting warmer before they then get colder. So, oh, you can zoom right on in, can't you? Here's us. Well, here's the captain. Daylight Fire says this is absolutely not what I was expecting and will be buying it. I thought it would be a sailing version of Frostpunk. I think there is a bit of that to this, definitely. It was described to me as a bit like Frostpunk. Panning and zooming speeds can be adjusted in the settings menu. Why, thank you, Captain. He takes the wheel back from you. I think I'll drink the morning in a little longer. Would you mind preparing my quarters for the day's work? There's much to do. All right, you fucking gad about. Captain's cabin. Oh! Take requests. A tub. 
A pristine furnished tub secured to the floor. Well, that's good. A luxury to be had on the ice. Yeah, no doubt. A painting. A classical painting depicting sailors doing battle with a kraken. Well, they've done a kraken job on that painting, haven't they? <laughs> John Keel says, how good is your Welsh geography? Have you ever been to... And then it's the, the very, very long Welsh place name that I've never even tried. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to try it. Gonna try it. So not good, basically. Saltbourne, an old to an old folk story of the great Captain Seamus's dance with the Salt Kings. Uh, the desk. On the desk, you make out a variety of papers, notes and maps, as well as a sealed letter with a stamp you don't recognise. The desk itself is suspended with ropes to keep it safely in place. Right. L we could leave. Let's take requests. This apparently is like a key part of the game. <laughs> Snow Ninja Sandcat says, eat the letter. You take a seat at the end of the room. The captain joins you. Now let's run through our provisions before taking requests. To start, there's 23 souls signed onto this expedition, ourselves included. That's 16 free to be assigned to tasks if they aren't already busy. The rest are deployed to their permanent stations. Sounds like a little tutorial. <laughs> Mr. Tom for the Wind says, Requests? Freebird! <laughs> you are only able to deploy crew who, have, who you have discovered. They must be in good health and not otherwise deployed to another post. Right. We'll be picking up the scouting crew at the next port. The lot of us also seem to be in good spirits. There's the morale thing. There's the discovered crew. The expedition will end tearing itself apart if you end the week with no... Ah, decorum left. Oh, you must have a sense of decorum, darling. We have enough provisions for at least six months in case of emergency. That is not long enough. That is not long enough. That's not long enough. They've been they've been frozen in for five years. Five years. And it is the same kind of ship we are on. We are provisioned for six months. We are doomed to fail. That is ridiculous. We should be provisioned for at least three years. Oh, I'm a little annoyed. <laughs> oh, that's awful. No Surrender says, ah, but the tins to last years are full of delicious lead. Very good. Adam Schofield has done a super chat saying, best, luck, best of luck on the exploring. I'm off to VOD Squad. Uh, I will see you on VOD Squad, Adam. I hope we make it through this. I don't think we will. If you cannot afford the minimum food rations at the end of a week, crew will become malnourished. Garina Rain says, what are the crew if not provisions? Don't be too hasty. Don't be too hasty to, to immediately start eating other crew. Unless cured, the malnourished status will develop into scurvy, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of a week. And more than enough fuel to see us there and back again. Stop saying hubristic things, Hunt. Stop it. Colder temperatures will increase the minimum fuel required at the end of a week. If you cannot afford that minimum fuel, the crew will become freezing. Unless cured, the freezing status will develop into frostbite, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually, say it with me, killing them at the end of a week. The sledding dogs. Well, there's still a matter of negotiation. Dogs will be needed to send sledding teams out to gather resources on the ice. We're even admitting we don't have enough fucking food. Sending hunts out requires... Sorry, sending hunts out further requires a greater amount of dogs. They will rest and become available between the weeks. Now, on to work. Right, you are, Captain, once I read this super chat. 
Edward Horseman has sent a super chat saying, was meant to be streaming D&D at 6pm CET tonight, but due to exhaustion, had to cancel. Thank you for providing lovely entertainment to recover and being a wonderful human being. Um, you're very welcome, Edward. I'm sorry to hear that you are exhausted. Um, I myself am literally just back from an extended break to deal with exhaustion. Do take care of yourself. That is, um, yeah, that's it's no joke. Um, I'm glad that you put the stream aside to focus on yourself. Now, rest up. Right. Emma Benton says, if anything happens to the dogs, I will riot. I don't doubt. Now, on to work. Corvid. Our Cordell. Ooh, look at Cordell. Let's listen to Corvid. A sailor enters. We've discovered a sailor. We found a stowaway in the lower hold. Bring them in. Another sailor enters, leading a young man by their side. You know, you're not the first stowaway I've had, says Hunt. The captain studies them further. You know where we're heading, don't you? I do, sir, says Runt. Flurglehin says you're finding food already. Halt, hang fire on the on the, the demands for cannibalism for just a little bit. We're provisioned for six months, everybody. The ice. Did you know that before you climbed inside that crate? I did, sir, says Runt. Har! How old are you? You're hardly a useful pair of hands. Not true. I can pull my weight, sir. Dot, dot, dot. Do you know your jibbum from your bowsprit? I do. I learned it all from my da. Your da? He's Ward's son. Followed him aboard back in the city. What should we do with him, Captain? Hmm. Well, sure. Hunt eyes you up. Your first mate? What should we do with them? I keep them on board. He's not staying on board. It's not your decision to it's your decision to make, not mine. I'm not doing that. We could we could put him ashore when we go to pick up the scouting crew. Put him off at the next port, says Emma Benton. I say your Genesis says they're a brick wall, mister. I'm inclined to keep him aboard. It will make our provisions go more swiftly, but having an extra pair of hands doesn't seem bad. And they seem keen. I keep them on board. I keep them aboard. Hunt squints. Why? Why do you ask if you don't... You need all the help you can get. This young man wants to help. He's clearly here because his father is. It would be wrong to separate them again. Or we don't have the time to accommodate this. If the boy wants to freeze to death, let him. You need all the help you get. You can get this young man wants to help. You need all the help you can get. This young man wants to help. I'd say we let him. Dot, dot, dot. All right, boy. Consider yourself part of the crew. Be sure to keep your nose clean and follow orders. Oh, I've just killed this young man, haven't I? Should have put him ashore. Could have saved him. Oh, God. Oh, well. For 14 says, is his father on the lost ship? No, I think he's also in as part of the crew. I will. Thank you, sir. Captain, not sir. Aye, Captain. The stowaway joins the two sailors below deck. Now a member of the crew. Well, it seems the litter has a new runt. Ha ha! I hope the rest won't mind sharing their rations. One available crew, plus one available crew rather. Crew increased to 24. Ah! Buster Scotch has done a super chat saying, It's been a while since I jumped on one of your streams. The New Year's had a janky start. Here's some dough and a happy belated New Year's to you. Thank you very much, Buster Scotch. Um, it's been a while since I've streamed, in fairness, so we've both been been away a little bit. But it's nice to be back and heading into the frozen wastes. What of the father? Simple, split their pay and their rations. Any rations the boy take takes should come from his. 
I doubt he intended for this to happen. We'll keep an eye on them both. Yeah, I'm not punishing both of them. I doubt he intended for this to happen. We'll keep an eye on them both. Heliquin says, probably a girl, to be honest. I'm guessing daughter. It, I mean, Runt's face was covered, but it, they did seem to have quite a feminine cast to their face. Like, there were some elements of it that, that seemed more feminine. You might be right. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on them both. Hmm, I suppose you're right, says Hunt. Well, that matter's sorted. Let's see Cordell. Have you agreed upon my conditions? To the point, eh? Sure, this is Lady Cordell. Nate Levy says, as a sea captain, you must be heavy-handed to maintain control. But I'm not a captain. I'm a first mate, Nate Levy. Baddy Wrongleg says it did use a mix of neutral and mask pronouns for Runt, though. True, but I think I think it's probably that Runt is masquerading as a as a boy. I don't know. I'm not sure. Griffin Rayner says the vibes are trans, I think. Actually, that's a very good point. Hmm. Inspired Zombie says splits pay split pay seems fair, but not the rations. Too bad that was all paired together. Yeah, I agree. Right. Sure, this is Lady Cordell. Cordell is here. Cordell here is to provide us with the kennel of hounds for the sleds. And our agreement was that she would train them up until we part ways at the nearest island. But you neglected to inform me that you were bringing my dogs through the Pale Passage. I had no intention of se I had no intention of sending the pack to its death. You seem to have good faith in this expedition. It's one thing to ask for my whole kennel. It's another to drag them into the ice to chase a myth. Mm. Never before has a buyer been so dishonest. Oh. And never before has a seller made such strong demands. And what exactly are these demands? Or you already sold the dogs, did you not? You have no control over them now. What are these demands? And what exactly are these demands? She demands we allow her to come along on the expedition. Oh, shit. As a member of the crew. None on this ship have the experience and familiarity with these dogs that I possess. If you are taking them to such a brutal location, they will need me to guide them if they have any chance of survival. The humans on board, too, of course. Of course. You can see my dilemma, Shaw. We've just accepted a stowaway. Well, yeah. Bringing on another member of the crew is a risk, but our hands may be tied. Why didn't I talk to Cordell first? Damn it. She's got to come. She's an expert. We need her. We need her more than we need the um, stowaway, you know. Hang on one sec. <laughs> Raise my chair a little bit. Ta -na 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 -na. Yeah, we got to bring her. we got to bring her. Your thoughts? I don't see how the harm in having an expert on the sled dogs. We should cancel the deal. We can find another power. If you're, but if you're so adamant, we accept your offer. I don't see the harm in having an expert on the sled dogs. A good point, Shaw. He turns to her. The deal is already to your benefit. Do you have anyone on board with extensive training in the management and ruling of dogs? Says Cordell, quite rightly. Your sleds are useless if you can't control the dogs efficiently enough to haul them. Correct. And I would like to ensure my dogs are treated properly. Welcome aboard, Cordell. Your knowledge should prove valuable. Or don't expect the crew to take, waste time taking care of your mutts then. Or I hope you're as experienced as you claim, Cordell. Welcome aboard, Cordell. Your knowledge should prove valuable. Welcome aboard, Cordell. Your knowledge should prove valuable. Invaluable, says Cordell. Ooh, spicy. I'll have a room prepared for you below deck. Max crew increased to 25. No need. You'll find me in the foxhole with the dogs. She leaves. I mean, it would be very warm. Also, an entire kennel of dogs? I'd cuddle with them. Are you kidding? I hope I'm not making a mistake, Shaw. F plus 14 available dogs. Oh, yeah. Finish requests. Now that's all settled, I have one more errand for you to run, says Hunt. 
Could you grab the Stoke brothers and order them to meet me up deck after dinner? Hefty lads, red hair, you couldn't mistake them for another. An urgent matter? Not at all, nothing you should concern yourself with. They'll be down on the middle deck. In the meantime, you should grab, you the, grab a copy of the crew manifest and get acquainted with more of the crew. Well, I want to know who the... Okay, well, I'd like to know who they are. Oh, look, look how, how the uh, amount of daylight has changed as we've gone further south. Lucy says, wait, is Shaw invisible? Well, yeah, we don't seem to have an avatar, which is interesting. Leave. Okie dokie. Shall we join the figure balancing on the mast? Fucking why not? Chris, Chris Rakowski has done another super chat saying, you know what they say, lay down with dogs, you get cuddles, and probably face licks. Well, exactly. Get down immediately, you'll kill yourself, we could yell. Upon closer inspection, you make out the ship's photographer, Kasha Belford, balanced on the ship's mast with her camera, lining up a photo. Get down immediately, you'll kill yourself. How's the view up there? Wait for her to finish. How's the view up there? We may as well try and be friendly to people. How's the view up there? I think that was an indication that... Um, our choices have consequences, if you ask me. You startle the woman, causing her to fall and nearly drop her camera. Wait for her to free herself or help her down. Let's help her down. You help her retrieve the device and untangle herself from the rigging. That was a close shave, Officer Shaw. It's about first time I met the. F it's about time I met the first officer of this ship. Repercussions says, getting a mid-19th century camera up there is quite a feat. I agree. Kasha. Kasha Belford. Nice to meet you, Kasha. You seem to already know my name. How so? Yeah, let's ask that. Catherine Mason has done a super chat saying, Remember, dogs have poison liver. Humans are edible. Always save the dogs. Oh, thank you, Catherine. That's good intel. <laughs> I didn't know that. Right. Emma Benton says, it's been a week and we haven't met. That's concerning. Yeah, I agree. I uh, seem to already know my name. How so? I do my research, says Kasha. I suppose there was some sort of rule against what I was doing up there. Deepest apologies, but sometimes there's a shot you just cannot pass up. An accomplished photographer, Kasha Belford, won the Fentler Prize, the highest honour in journalism, for her work covering plague outbreaks and riots in the capital. Cheerful stuff. It came as a surprise to many that such a reputable journalist would take such an interest in this expedition. There was scarcely any chance of Hunt or the benefactor turning her away. Well, that's good. You expected someone of her accolades to be older, more experienced. This is likely her first time on the sea like this. She's not prepared for this. Her proof is all we have. Her accomplishments surely outweigh her youth. Inexperience is a matter of interest, but her accolades speak for themselves. Hmm. The cold game. Picture that as a header. What? Let her continue. For the piece on this voyage, I'm trying to come up with a snappy name. No one will read it if the title sounds like the work of an amateur. This isn't a game, Kasha. This isn't a game, Kasha. An expedition like this isn't light business. Kasha nods eagerly, but you can tell she's not really listening. Got it. Oh, right. Of course. It is thrilling, though, isn't it? Well, I suppose you've had your fill of thrills up until now. She's talking about me criminal past! At least this thrill is within the law. You know who I am. Of course. I thoroughly researched the crew of the Temperance. may seem somewhat excessive, but I feel it's necessary for a proper chronicling. That and plenty of pictures. Great, great. Let's talk about my criminal past to everyone, why not? Don't worry, Shaw. You don't have a reputation that sets you apart from the rest. Uh-oh. A celebrity like Kurt Darling's presence will dwarf any rumours that could form around you. Who is Kurt Darling? 
That reminds me, he'll be joining us at next port. I should get his picture at some point. Take my picture, I'm nice! Bah! Aiden Folks has done a super sticker. The super sticker is of a Shiba Inu that yells, Hiya! With its little paws. A dog that can stand on its hind legs and speak English and yell. What will they think of next? Um, Doc Zock has done a super chat saying, Sorry, excuse me. Ah. Whenever you say temperance, I always wait for someone to say Brennan, thinking of the TV show I used to watch with my mother before I moved out. It's always weird, isn't it, when you get something like that in your head and you're just you're expecting someone to say the next bit. Um, sorry. <laughs> that reminds me, he'll be joining us at the next part. I should get his picture at some point. Kesha, uh, Kasha ho holds up her camera with a sense of pride before holding it up to her face. Oh, she's going to take my picture. Great. Late Fines has done a super chat saying, You are a wonderful person and such a source of positivity and joy. Thank you for all you do. Since I can't offer a hug, please accept this in lieu. Thank you very much, Late Fines. That's a really, really lovely super chat. Um, I'm glad you like what I do. Um, and that, yeah, you enjoy it. I enjoy doing it, which is nice. Although, I think uh, we should go on a little break. After this conversation, we'll take a five to seven minute break. Um, just because I could do with a bit more water and a trip to the loo, etc, etc. And maybe you do too. So, hold on, everyone. Stand still, Shaw! Please warn me before doing that. The captain sent me to grab a copy of the manifest, or how long do they take to develop? How long do they take to develop? How long do they take to develop? <laughs> Only a day or two. I've made a makeshift darkroom in the hold. Speaking of photographs, she hands you an annotated document. Here it is, the crew manifest. Yes! Oh, good. Okay. Undiscovered. Okay, so we got Yosef Joe Gren. He's a sailor and ice savvy. We've got Timmy Runt Ward, sailor stowaway Saltbourne. Killian Smurf Sanders, sailor and ice savvy. Amelia Corvid Sparrow. Ah, I see what they've done there. Sailor and Ice Savvy. We've got a lot of undiscovered folks. Scouts. Engineers. Haven't met either. Scientists. Three of them. Specialists. Rufus Hunt. Already deployed. Captain Ice Savvy. And a Mutt Wash. What is Mutt Wash? I don't know. Uh, Richard Templeton. Deployed. Science Officer. Landborn. Might have known. Um... Kasha Belford, deployed photographer, landborn. Robin Shaw, my face, my face. I have a reflective face. Saltborn criminal. Here we go. Resource cards, key items, accordion, Grimley's accordion, a weathered instrument tuned with care, and a camera, Kasha's camera, integral to her report and the crew manifest. These are both story items. Interesting. It's a work in progress. The scout team is to join us at the next port and the captain's forbidden me from the boiler room. Hmm. Oh, Benjamin Bloomer says, Matt Wash is neither landborn or saltborn, but both. Thank you, that's the one. Thank you. Okay. If you could ask the others to get their portraits taken, I'd be very grateful. Don't want to leave anyone out. Thank you, Kasha. I'll see what I can do. Do something like that stunt on the mast again and you'll be removed of your camera. I'll say I'll see what I can do. No, I'll say thank you. Thank you, Kesha. She smiles. I'll not disturb you or your work any further, officer. I have a few more shots I want to get before the sun lowers anyhow. Safe shots, officer. Don't worry. You leave her to her work. Okie dokie. Right, well, let's hit pause. Oh, that's nice. This is very nice. Anyway, we're going to take a five to seven minute break now because um, it's good to do that every now and then. So um, ask yourself, how's your posture looking? Do you need to stretch? Um, are you too warm? Are you too cold? Do you need something to drink? Are you peckish? Uh, is there something you've been putting off doing that you could do in the next five to seven minutes? Um, that, you know, would just sort of help your day along a bit. If so, go do it. Um, and we will come back. Um, if you're not going anywhere... Okay, you are, yeah, yeah. Um, if you're not going anywhere, don't worry, there'll be some smooth jazz and a picture of my dog, so I'll be 
back in five to seven minutes uh, and I will catch you then in a sec. Oh, hang on a minute. Lucy says, can you leave that music? I'm doing the... No, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> I could I could try, but I need to pee. <laughs> I know you can hear me. This is doing it on purpose. Let me pee. <laughs>
Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to this live stream here on youtube.com for us, Johnny Chiodini. How was your break? Was it was it calm and relaxing? Mine was nice. Had a little snack, had some water, went to the toilet. I sure hope chat didn't do anything weird and secretive that I'll never know about. It was probably fine. Uh, right. Let's just enjoy a little bit more of this music. Because it's very nice. Snorpin Bass says, Hello Johnny, we weren't doing anything. There we go. Good. I knew that you weren't doing anything. Right. Now then, Foxhall. The Foxhall door appears to be locked. Again. You can hear the kennel master preparing the room inside. I see. Ah, here's two Johns. You spot a large man with a youthful gait, carrying a heavy crate over his shoulder, with relative ease. Oh, your office is sure. He gives a bright, warming smile. Two Johns. That's what they call me. I'm sure you'll get your nickname later. Two Johns attempts to offer a handshake, but loses control of the crate. He struggles before firmly holding it in place with both hands. Ah, maybe later. Work awaits. John John added to manifest. John John? Ah, John, two Johns, John. Right, John, John. Let's go below deck. Ooh. I like this. Hmm, some people enjoy chess and a hot water bottle, it looks like. Or possibly a boxing glove. Or a whoopee cushion. Who could possibly say? All right. Descend to the mid-deck. Oh, this is more like it. Look, we're in the mess. Who's Mr. Diggle? Ah. Approach the cook. Ooh. You find yourself almost knocking over a man carrying a heavy pot. Careful, careful! You almost got drenched in broth. Apologies, I'm in a rush on request for hunt. You're the ship's cook, are you not? You should be more careful. You're the ship's cook. Are you not? You're the ship's cook, are you not? Indeed I am, and I've got a full plate on my hands. Pardon the pun. You hear a roar from the other side of the door. Oi, what's holding you up? Says Crewman. The cook shakes his head with a smile and chuckles slightly to himself. He grabs the large pot and prepares to make his way to the hungry crew before turning his head to you. If you don't mind, could you carry that tray of biscuits behind me? Carry the tray. I'm sorry, but I'm in a rush. Or do I look like a cook? Do it yourself. Priscilla Lopez says, Mr. Who? What was that name that was just mentioned? Mr. Diggle. It was Mr. Diggle is a cook in, in uh, The Terror, which is a show I like. Well, he's also a, a man who lived. But, you know, what I mean. Carry the tray. Of course I'll carry the fucking tray. We grab the plate and follow the cook out the door and to the table where the crew are waiting with bated breath. Upon the cook's arrival, the sailors let out a rowdy cheer. The ship's cook placing the broth upon the table. No one's ever cheered for broth. Maybe they have, I don't know. Trust me, fellas, this one is worth the wait. The cook speaks with a tone of pride as he ladles the broth into the bowls, with a, an erroneous apostrophe, of the crew. Chris Rakowski says, did I miss Johnny telling the bee joke? No, I've not told the bee joke yet. Oi, one at a time, you animals. Ward, you're awfully handy for only one arm. Ah, piss off, Junior, says Ward. Got some bread here too. Grab it fast before Tucker beats you to it, says Junior. The crew laugh and, and are merry as Junior guides you back through the kitchen. You seem popular. Fuck it. We weren't properly introduced, your Junior. We weren't properly introduced. We weren't properly introduced. Robin Shaw, right? I've been keeping track of all the new crew. You're in Stokes, but no one calls me that. You'll hear, you'll hear them all call me Junior. You should do the same. No idea why Hunt picked someone he's never worked with as a first mate. Dot dot dot. Bloody hell! But you seem the helpful sort. Glad to have you aboard. Will Hunt wish to see you as soon as possible? Did he? Oh, the Cook brothers. Yes, that's right. You seem popular. Well, you know what they say about the hand that feeds. Besides, half the crew I've known for years. 
You don't spend that much time on a ship without with folk without learning all about them. Why Junior? Simple nickname. My older brother is in the crew, hence Junior. Not very interesting, I know. Uh, well, Hunt wish to see you as soon as possible. Well, Hunt wish to see you as soon as possible. Ah, yes, good old Hunt. Never a rest on this ship, let me tell you. Especially when Hunt takes a liking to you. Well, he said he was popular. Right, has that... How many has that added? Just Junior, I suspect. Who, of course, Junior Stoke is deployed as a cook. And he's a salt ball as the day is long. All right. Uh, call the crew for dinner. They're already eating dinner. Guess I'll call the crew for dinner. Cling a ding ding. The crew have their meal. It passes in relative silence. Okay. The crew return to their post. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. Twilight falls. These hammocks look amazing. Let's see now. Aha, the dinner table. Over dinner, you overhear the newly picked up stowaway speaking with a one-armed man. Oh, look. Runt's, <laughs> Runt's got his father's chin. <laughs> but da, your lucky hunt didn't throw you overboard. Half a mind to do that myself, says Runt's da. Come on, da. I'm here to help. Better know that involves work. Don't expect special treatment. I won't. You're an impossible child, Timmy. <laughs> Fucking hell. One available crew, Doug Ward, added to manifest. Let's have a look at Doug. Doug Ward. Sailor Saltborn. Doug Runt's da Ward. Who is this then? Mr. Glass. You spot one of Templeton's science Templeton science team pacing around the mid-deck searching through some luggage that has been pulled from a cabin. Let me look in the light. Where was I now? He notices you. Ah, Officer Shaw, correct? Dwight Glossley. Apologies, I seem to have misplaced something while settling in the cabin. A bottle of wine, actually. Can't be hard to miss. It will turn up eventually. You best not be drinking on the job. Perhaps one of the sailors took it. Can't be hard to miss. It will turn up eventually. This is none of my fucking business. Can't be hard to miss. It will turn up eventually. I would hope so. My wife and I brought a bottle to celebrate with. To be saved for the journey back? Mm, of course. Well, if you find it, please let me know. Dwight Glossley added to manifest. Scientist, landborn. Makes sense. Enter your cabin. Let's have a look at our cabin. Ooh. Open your journal. Good. Return. It's a nice cabin, this. That is a terrible... Actually, that's not a terrible use of space. Obviously, we're making do with the shape of the room we have. Anyway. A second above deck. Templeton. You son of a bitch. You spot Templeton looking out into the sunset. As you approach, he turns to you and nods. Ah, uh, Officer Shaw. It will be some time before we see a sunset such as this again. The light distribution toward the southern pole is quite the change. I fear we started on the wrong foot. Sarah Fletcher says, I'll have to catch up on VOD because I'm waiting for my landlord to come walk the place, but glad to see you back. Hope the landlord doesn't give you any shit. All landlords are bastards. I fear we started on the wrong foot. A misunderstanding. Let us place it behind us, officer. Templeton keeps his focus on the reflection of the setting sun over the stirring waters of the ocean. There is great expectation upon us, officer. 
From who? Who is this benefactor of ours? That is not for you to know. Not yet. Templeton looks down, catching his reflection in the ocean's surface. Wow, he's looking very far over the over the um, the rail. He looks back up at the sunset. Quite the sight, but I wouldn't linger upon it too long. We should retire for the evening. It's important the first officer be well rested. Use E to advance to the next week. Boop. Okay. Oh, look. We can do normal high half rations. Let's just do normal rations. Fuel spend of the week. Half. No, there's no point in threatening malnourishment or frostbite. Let's just keep it at standard. Normal rations. Nothing's gone wrong. Yet! Minus 50 fuel, minus 50 food. The ship makes its last port at Orca Island. Cordell's sledding dogs are picked up. The scouting crew and Kurt Darling are picked up. The days are getting brighter as you move further south. Why did we not reprovision? It's minus four degrees now. Oh, it must have been minus. It must have been ten degrees. Anyway. Start next week. Week two. Two weeks on the temperance. I'm so... What? How have we... What? There's a rap on your cabin door. Come in! Hang on. I thought... I thought the rations and stuff were meant to be... A month. Well, anyway, come in. The door swings open to reveal Kurt Darling. All but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. There you are. Officer Shaw. The ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precede him. Adorned with a slew of apparatus. App <laughs> apparatus? Apparatus? Apparatuses. Apparatuses. Adorned with a slew of stuff, this seemingly one-man expedition would be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration, and the merchandising that followed. Excellent. As Neo Hamilton says, that is an absolute unit of a sailor. Oh, Alyssa says the hundred is what you have for the week, but saving them is good. Thank you, Alyssa. Okie dokie. Got it, got it, got it. I've no time for celebrities. It's an honour. I know little of the man. I know little of the man, because I want to know. I know little of the man. His reputation is indeed great, but the man behind the legend is but a stranger. Hmm. Hiding away from the rest of us, are you? Are you always this early to rise? Do you need something off me, Kurt? Or no, I'm simply busy. Are you always this early to rise? These days I tend to enjoy a good lion, but not during an expedition! Thanks, Kurt. You know what they say of early birds and worms. Apologies for not stopping by sooner, sure. It took a while to set up my team, and a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. That's right, you're something of a celebrity, aren't you? That's right, you're something of a celebrity, aren't you? I take that to mean you haven't heard of me before. Well, that is a pleasant surprise. If I ever say something like that to anybody within earshot of any of you, you have my permission to murder me on the spot. There aren't many who haven't seen my films, particularly in this line of work. Captain Crimbo says, damn him with faint praise, yes! Yeah. More than one fellow on this crew said my work inspired them to explore the world. Blah, 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 blah. Wooden Coyote says, Kurt's design is reminding me of the famous photo of polar explorer Peter F Fruken? Peter Fruken. Danish explorer, bloody hell. Yeah, I can see that. You look like an absolute unit. Right, um. More than one photo of blah blah, explore the world. 
Quite the honour, is it not? I'm sure you'll rece- I'm certain you receive that praise often. The crew don't seem the film going type. Is there a point to any of this grandstanding? I'm certain you receive that praise often. Not as often as what as you would think. <laughs> Ahem. I suppose I did get distracted, didn't I? Anyway, I was hoping you'd join me up deck. Does Hunt require my presence? Of course, but why? I'm busy, Kurt. You should be too. Of course, but why? We finally entered the pack. I thought you'd want to see it for yourself. It can wait. I have work to do. We'll be moving through the ice for a while. I'm not interested. I'll be right behind you, Kirk, because pack ice is not something you mess with. I'll be right behind you, Kurt. Kurt turns to walk away before turning back. Oh, and enjoy your morning. It's a good day, sure. Har. Not sure about Kurt. He leaves. Kurt, darling, added to manifest. Kurt, darling, navigator, hobbled, ice savvy. Look at that grin. <laughs> Nero Hamilton says, what's the difference between pack ice and regular ice? Well, the pack is like when... Literally, the sea freezes and forms a solid sheet. The sea freezes over and you're just stuck in the pack. But the pack can also shift and move and drift. So when ships were frozen in in the pack, they would fix their location, but they'd be like, well, come the end of winter, we don't know where we'll be. We may drift miles. We may be crushed by the ice from the sheer pressure. That's what happened to... um, Shackleton's expedition. Um, like the. Matthew to go says pack ice has advantage on attacks if another ice is in five foot distance of it. Very good. Well done. Um, yeah, pack ice is basically the pack is just like it's the winter. It's the winter freeze over the sea. Hugh says endeavor, was it? Oh, it was a bit of an endeavor, yeah. Yes, it was. Endurance, says Pensword 14. Endurance, that's the one. Not endeavour, endurance. Uh, right, doctor's office. Well let's, well, let's meet the doctor. The door to the doctor's office remains locked. Seems the good doctor isn't in. What do you want, Kurt? Oh, you want me to go? Oh, perhaps enjoying your sleep. What is it with you and try commenting on everyone else's sleeping habits? You're yet to come across the ship's doctor, even after all this time. When you do, though, you should really wipe it off and apologise. Mrs. Gloss. Ah, Mrs. Gloss. You note one of the science team returning to their room. Ah, Mrs. Gloss, says Kurt. Did you have a good rest? Stop asking about people sleeping. She nods to you. Ah, hello. I did not expect many to be up this early. Harriet Glossley. I believe I've met your husband. What has you up so early? Were you just above deck? I believe I've met your husband. I believe I've met your husband. (laughs) Ah, yes, Dwight made mention of your encounter. He's still fast asleep. He's adjusted to the ship well. I believed a walk around the ship would help acclimate myself to the waves. Perhaps it will take some more time. With that, Mrs. Gloss makes her way back to her cabin. The science team aren't used to the sea or the sailor folk. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Quite the culture clash, isn't it? Well, I'm sure they'll grow used to them over time. Har. Harriet Glossley added to manifest. Great. We could enter. No, we've just been to our cabin. Descend to the mid deck. No, we are needed above deck. The helm. At the stern, you notice an older sailor at the helm. The old man takes in a deep breath in the cold air before letting out a satisfied exhale. (sighs) Morning! And a good morning to you, says Kurt, who simply will not leave us alone. Jack escaped the box again, says I'm late to the stream, Johnny. Do you mind giving a quick recap on what this game is? This is The Pale Beyond. It is a polar survival game. Uh, We are navigating to the South Pole in order to find a ship that has gone missing. I am the first mate on the ship. 
Flurgle Hinge says, exhale is not a noun. No, you're right, it's exhalation, isn't it? He eyes you up. Officer Shaw, right? Lefty. The nicknames are quite reductive, aren't they? Leroy Letavas, uh, Le Letavara says, you chose to follow Kurt. Yeah, but then I decided I was going to go other places. He's following me. Um... Late Finds has done a super chat saying, need to run to an appointment, I'll have to catch the rest later. You have my permission to do a little cannibalism as a treat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Call me that on account of, well, the obvious, he chuckles. Don't worry about the bad sight. This is all feel. Just keeping her steady. He examines you. Surprised Hunt picked from, the out picked from outside for his first mate. I'm surprised as well, he seems the insular type. I assure you I'm more than qualified for the role. Would you prefer the role? You seem to have the experience. I'm going to say I'm surprised because he seems insular. I want information on the Capitan. He is. Well, there we go. You must be something special for Hunt to look outside the ranks. Criminal. Heard some rumours about what you are up to before. Honestly, that might be a boon in Hunt's eyes. Everyone knows my past. Mornings like these are about the only peace I get from the younger lot. You should take these moments when you can. Lefty Dilf confirmed. <laughs> Sorry, that was for me. Um... Sarah Wall has done a super chat saying usually just a lurker but wanted to say I missed you and glad that you took time for yourself after an anxious week you are a comforting voice very very glad that I can be of service Sarah um, thank you for the super chat and for, for chiming in in chat uh, when you are normally a lurker um, I'm, I'm glad that I'm a comforting week I'm sorry you are having a, an anxious week um, I know the feeling well but hopefully you will have a restful and joyous weekend and things will go a bit easier. But thank you again for a lovely super chat. Um, Jay Appleseed is on a super chat saying, Pig tax, brackets, hello, wonderful person, missed you. Thank you very much, Jay Appleseed. I will feed the dog a £10 note. Actually, she probably wouldn't eat it. I will buy some treats for the dog. Revka says, I mean, he kind of is. Yeah. Lefty's pretty handsome. Right. Jack escaped the box again, says, deck hand I'd like to, fr to fraternise with. Perfect. Very good, Jack. Right, you should take these moments when you can. Lefty returns his attention to the helm. Right. Sky the Nerd says, I'm normally a lurker too, but I've been typing a lot today and it's been fun. Oh, well, I, uh, I'm glad you've been having fun playing outside of type. Um, lurkers are great in general. Um, and if you're one of those, hello! Um... But, you know, also chat nice sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes underlined three times. Uh, right. As you get older, I suppose you learn to value the quiet moments, eh? Says Kurt. Let us hope we're just as diligent when we're old and grey. Myself before you, of course! Says Kurt. Harold Turner added to manifest. Right, let's go join Kurt at the bow. You join Kurt at the bow of the ship. Christine Govas Robert says uh, in a super chat, glad to see you back, send love to Watson. I will. I've shut her out of the room for now. I've closed the door because uh, my partner's busy and I don't want to disturb them. And also... Uh, you'll see in the episode of Preston and I recorded yesterday, Scout just started screaming. Anyway, you join Kurt at the bow of the ship. You both feel the temperature, sorry, you both feel the temperance break the flows below you. Gripping the railing, he draws an enormous breath. The footing beneath rises as the ship mounts an impending ice flow. There is a moment's hesitation before a profound crack relieves the ship, cascading across the ice. He exhales. See? Nothing else like it. You weren't wrong. I assumed you'd seen everything. It's just ice, Kurt. Don't get too excited. You weren't wrong. It's something all right. Look at the ice. No two cracks are the same. 
Everyone is different. No two people are not on fire. Aww. All caused by us. Did you just want to show me the ice? For now, though, I need a navigator, not a poet. All caused by us. <laughs> Diana says, I fucking love ice. Very good. All caused by us, we say. By the laws of nature, this place wants us dead. And yet, here we are, traversing in harmony. How fantastic is that? How far are we from land? I assumed you'd seen everything. How far are we from land? I'm not buttering him up. How far are we from land? We're about a week sail from the last known location of the old Viscount. Assuming she isn't exactly where they left her, we can't take smooth sailing for granted. Same goes for this daylight. This is definitely his voice now. Ain't folks says, Matt Berry? Yeah, pretty much. It won't remain this bright for so long once winter encroaches. <laughs> uh, Roswell Walton's done a super chat saying, Treats for kitties. I will feed them £2.50 each. Roswell, thank you. No, I'm joking. Um... I will I will treat the cats later. Yeah, after this we think we've all earned a little treat. Gonna have a little beer, gonna have some dinner, gonna treat the pets. Oh, good luck or a quick death is in chat and has done a whopping great super chat, but as is customary, good luck or a quick death has said nothing. Being a stoic sort of person. But thank you very much, good luck or a quick death. It's nice to see you again. Um uh, Rogue Monitor has done a oh bloody hell a big old super chat as well saying the return of Johnny is exactly what I needed after bad sensory day I hope you had a good time off to relax welcome back thank you Rogue Monitor I'm sorry to hear about the bad sensory day but um, yeah uh, it's um, it's yeah it was a really nice break and it's nice to be sort of back doing things <laughs> Snow Ninja Sandcat says two pounds of cat treats is a lot well they're getting two pounds fifty so there He looks out across the white. We won't be so confident when the leads dry up and we're stuck here till the next cycle. This is what it, this is what I'm afraid of. We've got food for six months. But he's saying the leads might dry up and we'll get stuck here until the next cycle. That's a whole year. That's two lots of six months. Actually. We need to change course, says Kurt. Avoid the pack. Have you informed Captain Hunt? It's not my decision, or we have enough supplies if it comes to that. No, we must inform Captain Hunt. Have you informed Captain Hunt? He won't listen to me. Thinks I've been dulled by retirement. I've probably seen more ice than he has whiskey. It's not my decision. We have enough supplies if it comes to that, or I'll hear no more of this. But no, I, I want to agree with Kurt. I do agree with Kurt. We have enough supplies if it comes to that. It's not the supplies I'd be worried about in that situation. People will turn on each other before they let themselves starve. Uh oh! Sarah Wilkin, bang on time, says only one and a half hours left of the stream and Johnny hasn't eaten anyone yet. Let's see. Have you ever experienced the long night winter? It's not pleasant to say the least. There's a chain of command. This isn't one of your adventure serials, Kurt. Nope, I can't say that I have. Hugh says, more ice than whiskey. Only sounds dramatic until you think of it. I've seen more ice than whiskey. <laughs> yeah, too shaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen so much more ice than I have whiskey. Most of the whiskey I've had has had a, an ice cube in it. More ice than whiskey only sounds dramatic until you think of it. I've seen more ice than whiskey. <laughs> oh, that really got me, Hugh. Right, I can't say that I have. <laughs> Hugh says, this science doesn't hold up. <laughs> if it was he's seen more whiskey than he has ice, that would be devastating, because you've got to work pretty hard to see more whiskey than you have ice. You know, like, sh like, Kurt here has seen a shitload of ice. So the captain needs to have just seen whiskey 
Twice. No, wait. No, wait. No, he does need to... Hmm. Eh. I can't say that I have. <laughs> We're only as good as the unhappiest man, Robin. I'll do what I can. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Is the correct response. Kurt nods and turns back to look across the eyes. You can't argue with expertise. All right, Captain. Captain's cabin. We're going to the captain's cabin. Is there anything else to do? Hmm. Ascend above deck. We don't want to. There's no one else to talk to. Look at the pack ice. Look. See, this is the thing, right? This is this is the danger. Is that you've got all of these sort of flows coming around, and for the time being, we're making headway. We're getting through. But if all of this freezes and becomes a sheet. We are screwed. Zazzy Fire says, Yay for your welcome return. I'm heading back in time to VOD Squad. Um, have fun, Zazzy Fire, and I will see you back at this point. Hello again in the stream. Um, bear, bear in mind, the first like half hour is just me reading Super Chats, which is lovely. But if you want to get to the game, skip ahead a little bit. Right. Send below deck. Send to the mid deck. Oh, everyone's asleep. Oh yeah, we got to go direct to the captain's cabin because that's yeah. All right. Ah, uh, we're taking requests. We're taking requests. Ah, sure. Says Hunt. Ready for another day of work? Did you hear Kurt's advice? He wants us to switch course. I indeed I am captain, or hopefully it's lighter than usual. Did you hear Kurt's advice? He wants us to switch course. Aye, he had a few words to share. We should go for broke. He may have been an expert in his time. If you're not going to listen to him now, why did you bring him on this expedition, Hunt? But these days, Kurt is one with more money than sense. Anyway, back to work. That's all we get? I'm the first mate. Let's talk. I was hoping you'd help me work through a few more requests from the crew. All right, I got a request. This one comes from the crew. Can we change course, please? You may have noticed the line pooling up outside. Everyone wants something, it seems. Diana quite rightly says, of Kurt, and if he's, you know, if he's got more money than sense, uh, then why the fuck is he here then? But the way Diana's written it, it sounds a lot like um, Pierce Brosnan in uh, Taffin. <laughs> then why the fuck is he here then? Anyway, call them in as you please, says Hunt. Okay, we've got Hammond, Kasher, and Corvid. Well, we've not met Hammond yet, so let's call in Hammond. A short, sour-faced man in engineer clothing approaches. A acting daft hunt, says the angry engineer. Not with intention. Not bloody surprised you didn't notice. Sure, this is our chief engineer, Clive Hammond. An opinionated one. What is it, Hammond? We've hit the ice, and you haven't assigned any extra men down on the boiler. You have your engineering team, and we've only got six arms between us. I need more manpower maintaining this. Sailors. Many of the crew have their own tasks they're busy with. Many, but not all. And I've already assigned s Smurf on the matter. <laughs> The captain turns to you. Minus one available crew. How many do you think is fair? One? Three? More. Open the crew manifest to choose how many sailors you wish to assign. I'm not... I've only got eight available. Some choices require you to assign sailors from your manifest. In this choice, you may choose the amount to assign. 
two Johns. Are we doing runt? Not lefty. Lefty lefty's on the hill. Gren. You can have three. Confirm your orders. Sam L has done a super chat saying, Welcome back, with like a like a grinning, smiling face. Could you tell Claire she is doing a great job? Ten months old Ollie is loving catching up on your old streams. Is it odd you have streams older than people? Um Well, firstly, alright, Claire. Hello, Claire, Claire, you're doing a great job. Uh, Sam L would like you to know, as would I. Uh, hopefully I will do as good of a job uh, trying to keep these people alive in a hostile frozen uh, landscape. Um, is it odd that I have streams older than people? Uh, not really. People are being born every minute, technically. Mm. Rogue Monitor says, sorry if someone asked already, but are you going to be at the May Comic Con on the Saturday or just the Friday for the show? Um, I will be there on the Saturday because we're doing a signing and a panel. So I'll be in. Worry ye not. Uh, Stitch Scott has done a super chat saying, First time managing to catch a live stream. Whoop whoop. I'm very much a lurker slash vod skelly lol. Thank you for helping me understand my own identity and being able to come out to mum as they them. Oh, congrats, Stitch. That's wonderful. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm very glad that I, I was able to help in some small part. Um, that's lovely. And uh, thanks for super chatting and for, you know, being here live. Uh, and also for the watching that you do as a lurker slash mod scale. You're all right, Stitch. Let's confirm those orders. You can take two Johns, Runt, and Joe. You're giving me the bloody still away. Would you rather Nan? Says Hunt. The engineer holds his tongue. Fine. But you can tell me how right I was when we're buried under the ice. He leaves. Fucking hell. It's hard to keep people happy, it seems. A good spirit, that one. Beneath the oil and temper, says Hunt. All right, fair enough. You won't be seeing much of him, though. Prefers to borrow himself into the boiler room. Yes, he thinks the boiler room's very important, because it is. All right. Kasher or Corvid? Kasher or Corvid? Kasher. Corv, Corv, Corvid. Corvid enters the office. Hunt, you asked for a report on how the stowaway was doing? Oh no. I, I want to see if the young boy has been settling in well. I just assigned him work. He has indeed. Oh, thank God. It means another mouth to feed, but the boy works hard and doesn't ask much. He has his dad to guide him as well. Ah, oh, shit, I just split them up. I'm sure the boy's father is ecstatic. Worried sick, but happy, aye. Well, what do you know, sure? Perhaps we were right to keep the boy aboard. She leaves. Oh, that was good. Kasha. Captain Shaw. A thought occurred to me the other day while looking through the crew manifest and... Well, it might be too late for this now that we've already entered the ice. Out with it. I thought it would be good to have individual photos of the full crew. For your report? Not only my report, it would be good reference for the manifest. Put faces to the names. It's only 20... Nine of us. Much of this crew have served me for years. Some decades. I have little problem putting faces to the names. Your thoughts, sure? It seems like a good idea. If nothing else, it would make for a good souvenir. A waste of time. We should be bracing ourselves to the ice, not posing for pictures. It's a bit late, but it's now or never. May as well get it over with. I mean, the manifest shows them for me anyway, right? This is the first thing I've considered saying is a waste of time. The problem is, though, like, we could be we could be gentler about that. Let's fuck it. Let's just say no. Ah, but like, Tegan Evans has pictures to bring home to their families. That yeah. we we'll split the diff. Now or never. It's a bit late, but it's now or never. May as well get it over with. Aye, a good point. Okay, fine. But maybe you could sound a little more enthused. Fuck off, Hunt. Well, Belford, I see no problem there. 
I'll arrange for the pictures to be taken before the crew have their dinner. Thank you, Captain. Sure. In the meantime, I'll attempt to get as many individual crew photos as I can. You're still welcome to help on that matter, Officer Shaw. She departs satisfied. Finish requests. Captain Crimbo says Shackleton always had time for a photo, with an ever-dwindling number of sus subjects, admittedly. No one died on Shackleton's doomed expedition. No one died. They didn't lose a single man. They lost all of the sled dogs. Good to have all that settled then, says Hunt. Perhaps we shouldn't rule out old Kurt so easily. If the man thinks there could be an alternate uh, pass through the ice, he's free to search for it. Yes! Sure, meet with him when you have time. Ah, oh, changing course or not, we'll want we'll want one his scout set up in the crow's nest. Take care of that, and then he'll be done for the day. Captain Karimba says, bugger, I was thinking of Scott. Ah, there you go. Well, tremendous. We get to speak to the navigator. Oh, let's have a look at the rigging. But who's this? Approach the sick young man. You spot a youthful looking man. Leaning over the side of the ship, his head slumped as he looks into the icy pool below. It appears he's been visited by a spot of seasickness. Pat him on the back. You make your way to the man and reach out your arm to pat the... Don't surprise people to pat the sickly fellow on the back. As soon as your hand reaches him, he jolts upright in shock. A bespectacled young man shaking with unease. He stares at you for a brief moment, a look of shame plastered upon his face. So sorry. Are you all right? Um, yes. Well, not really. Ah, I'm very sorry. The man turns around and hurriedly runs in the opposite direction, avoiding your gaze. Well, that went brilliantly. Arthur Nutley has been manned, added to the manifest. Has been madded, madded to the manifest. Has been... Who is he? Oh, Arthur Nutley. He's the doctor. And he's ill. And he's got a... a, a, a whatever you call them, saw. A, like a wire saw. Horrible. Okay. Sorry, Nutley. Nutley! <laughs> <laughs> While examining the rigging of the ship, your eyes notice a figure darting by, climbing on the ropes with ease. The figure lands on their feet before dusting themselves off. Their outfit denotes one of Kurt's scouting crew. Ah, no problem, says acrobatic scout. She looks to you. And you are? Officer Shaw, yourself. Flick, I'm one of Kurt's crew. Don't worry about my safety. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. I didn't say anything about your safety. Kurt doesn't just hire anyone. Well, he didn't hire me for no reason. Got the medals in gymnastics if you're worried about my credentials. I haven't said a thing to you. Flick jumps up and returns to scaling the rigging of the ship. Sore and Killiper added to manifest. Uh, uh, she's a scout, isn't she? Scout. Ice savvy, islander, and rude. Speak to the navigator. Send me up there, I'll get you a reading. The scientist eyes the man's cane and turns to you. I believe the navigator means you to send one of his scouts. The navigator clears his throat and taps his cane. Of course, ahem. If you find one of mine, they'll get us a reading. Rightly. <laughs> Scout from the crow's nest. Some choices require you to assign a certain type of crew member. In this choice, you may only assign scouts. Well, let's send Flick up there. Confirm your orders. They ascend to the nest and take a reading with the sextant. All clear from up top, says Flick. <gasps> My goodness. My goodness. A map. So, Orca Island. We've passed Orca Island, I believe. Oh, Viscount Island. So, Orca Island. The last port you made where you picked up Kurt and the scouting team from. Uh, here's the ship. Viscount Island. The last known location of the Viscount, your destination. Alrighty. Uh, 
Ah. Okie dokie. And uh, let's return. Return. All right. Now, Kurt, we should have a chat, shouldn't we? Oh, wait. Is it? Let's listen. You overhear two of the newly arrived scouting crew talking. Suspicious? Uh, in Felix Sorora has done a super chat saying, have to head off now, but we'll check the VOD to see how long it took to resort to cannibalism. Once again, glad you had a brilliant holiday, Johnny, and it's lovely to see you in the LSPs again. Thank you very much, in Felix Soror. Um, take care. Um, and if you're watching this on the VOD, hi, welcome back. Um, yeah, thank you for a, um, a bloody lovely super chat. I don't know that we're going to eat anyone on this stream, you know. Which isn't a bad thing. Ah, Quilzy! Great. Great. Really going to enjoy this guy. Have any trouble settling in? Not too bad. Can't wait for a chance to sleep, though. A proper navigator never rests until their work is done. Shut the fuck up, Yorick the Third. Of course, of course. I take it you had no issue settling in. Not at all. The crew were a funny lot. Old Kurt certainly caught their attention. Har! Do you think any of them would mistake Kurt and myself? Yorick the Third is... I, I like him not. Ah! Lou Jones says, damn, I came in for cannibalism. See ya. We've, ah! I mean, we haven't, we haven't had the opportunity to eat anyone yet. And I don't think... Oh, well. I think you'd collapse from joy if they did. Har, perhaps. All right. Captain Crimbo says, alas, I guess we'll have to eat poor Yorick. Very good. Yorick, Yorick the third more. Or Hadrian Quilzy Quill. Quilzy! I have a natural suspicion of anyone whose nickname is their surname with a Y on the end. Quilzy! Right. Approach the accordionist. But it sounds so nice. Bloody hell! He spots you and ceases in his playing. That's a striking man! Need something? You're Grimly, aren't you? Captain Shiny says, what if your surname already has a Y on the end? Then you're, then you're, then you're free of it. You're, um... You're immune. Like, no one's gonna call me Kiadini ye It's just like, I don't know, like, oh, we go, you were Stokesy and Clarky and, 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 uh, 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 Jonesy, we're all going out on a lash, la 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 la, you know? You're Grimly, aren't you? Nice accordion, do you mind if I see? Far too forward. Um, Baddy Wrongleg says you're not immune, you get Urs instead. Kiadini Urs. No, one, no one's tried that with me. Lou Jones says, that's me, Jonesy! <laughs> uh, your brother sent me to speak with you. You're Grimly, aren't you? The Kesling says, as a suggestion, start with the cannibalism now and save the real food for when times get tough. That was a super chat, by the way. Uh, I will take that under advisement, the Kesling. I suppose it would mean that the, uh, the rations go further because we have fewer mouths to feed. But what if they get a taste for it and they don't want to eat whatever? This is a, it is a very nice accordion. You're Grimly, aren't you? The man grunts. I, Grimly Stoke. I'm the ship's carpenter. Nice accordion, do you mind if I see? Grimly takes a step back as you approach. You can see from there, no touching. Bloody hell. You're Junior's brother. Junior? Oh, you're sure. Junior mentioned you. In a positive or negative light? Ask him yourself. Won't keep you from your work. Don't keep me from my break. Fucking hell. Hey. 
heavens. The Fingers Mahoney says he's hot, a carpenter, and he has a cool name? Fuck off. <laughs> oh, Thunder Cookie says I feel like Grimly wanted to be first mate. Yeah, possible. Possible. Damned if it isn't intriguing, though. Whew. Hooded Sailor, eh? <laughs> Emma Blast says, well, that's a hot nut to crack. <laughs> Brodette says, I respect the no-touch policy. Accordions aren't cheap. Fair. Fair. You spot a suspicious-looking sailor emerge from the pantry. The hooded sailor spots you, keeping their hands firmly in their pockets. Not what, not what it looks like, Officer Shaw, says mysterious sailor. Pleck, but call me gnomes. I'm not thieving anything. You best have a good explanation, then. I have a perfectly good explanation. No worries. I was just setting up a practical joke. And what is this practical joke? Not going to spoil the surprise. It's not at your expense, if that's your concern. Oh, I'm not sure about this guy. Butterscotch has done me a super chat. Uh, it's it's a, a generous one. Thank you very much, Butterscotch. She says, hey, Johnny, could you do me a small favor and pass on a message to my temporary roommate and best friend, Abinaya? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Abinaya. Abinaya? Abinaya. Sorry. Abinaya, who's listening to the stream from the next room. Abinaya! I'm sorry I said your name wrong the first couple of tries. Um, but I'm uh, passing on a message from Butterscotch. Who it occurs to me now you may know as a different by a different name. I also don't know what the message is I'm meant to be passing along. Perhaps Butterscotch can tell you. It's nice. It was nice talking to you though. Butterscotch, how was that? Ab nice talking to you, Abinaya. Oh, she knows me as that name. All right. Well, but Butterscotch says hi, maybe. Message incoming. Stand by, Abinaya. The message is incoming. Abinaya, listen here. You're a wonderful person, and good things are coming your way. Drink more water, finish that tiramisu jar, and always listen to Butterscotch. There you go. I hope, I hope that was okay, Butterscotch. Tiramisu's good. How big's the jar? I'm picturing, like, a, a big Kilner jar of... I like tiramisu, it's really good. Anyway, right. 10 out of 10 no notes. Thank you, Brian Shiner. It's not like you're expensive, that's your concern, says Gnomes. Have to get some enjoyment around here, don't you think? With their mysterious trap set, Gnomes scurries off to the upper decks and returns to work. Skylar Pleck. Added to manifest. Not sure about you, Skylar Pleck. Not sure about you at all. Well, let's approach the cook. Neo Hamilton says that's too much tiramisu, Johnny. I know, but it is nice. Hey, Shaw, can you grab some tins from the pantry? It's nearly time for dinner. Ah! 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 What will it be this week? Shaw? Feed the hoosh pot? No. Well, now I've got to go to the fucking pantry. The moment you enter the pantry, a bag of flour drops on your head, scattering all your officer's uniform. Scattering all over your officer's uniform. The hell was that? Gnomes? You wipe the flour off you before continuing. A good one, gnomes. Dickhead. Tinned food. You lift a crate of tins from the shelves. Hope they're not goldener cans. Mwah. That was rubbish. The hoosh pot. Crew need fed for the week. Feed the hoosh pot. Hoosh is an interesting substance. Hoosh is uh, basically like really high calorie, uh, often like very high fat content stuff. Like hoosh is just like hot, hot mix of thing. Like it could be like oats and just bacon and berries. Um, because 
when you're on a, a, a polar exploration, the amount of calories you need to sustain skyrockets. Um, so there are things like pemmican. Pemmican is a really weird, like basically bar of just like condensed fats and stuff. Um, like, um, I actually think Shackleton's expedition ate quite a lot of dog pemmican, which is sad. Um, but yeah, it's just basically like survival food. Anyway, we're feeding the hoosh pot. Hoosh is like really calorific gruel, kind of. The formless mists... Mist Uri says, I'm very impressed with how much Johnny knows about naval expedition, considering how afraid of the sea they are. I'm not afraid of the sea. I'm afraid of whales. Anonymous says, dried meat mixed with fat, if I recall correctly. Yes, that's what pemmican is. Right. Feed the hoosh pot. Resource cards. Resource items may be spent here for instant effects, increasing food or changing the status of the crew. Crate of tinned food. Furnace plus three. Hoosh plus 20. Sealed sustenance prepared by the Apperton Tinning Company. Yes, we'll play Creative Tin Food to feed the hoosh pot. Feed the hoosh. Feed the hoosh. Well, we fed the hoosh pot then. I'm going to... Where is fucking... What's their name? Uh, gnomes. Skylar Pleck. You're in trouble, mate. The crew have their meal. Har! Shall we toast to the ice, says Darling. He's an embarrassment. Aye, says John. The days get longer, but dinner. Dinner is fixed. It will see us through the long days and the darkest nights, says Darling. The crew return to their post. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. You can't help but notice that it's still bright light outside. Oh yeah, look. Look how much light we're getting at the minute. Let's have a listen. You notice two sailors passing by from the dinner table. An, in uh, uh, an inebriated sailor. On wobbling legs, leaning on the shoulder of another. Ah, uh, good times, good times. Need to learn to handle your drink, Tucker. Ah, but I'm fine, says Tucker. My mates can carry me, eh, Cavity? Cavity says they can also drop you. Have two Johns carry you next time. Are you asleep? Shit. <laughs> Rafe, Joom and Tolson Higgs have been added to the manifest. Tolson Tucker Higgs, sailor, saltborn. Uh, Rafe Cavity Joom. I haven't looked at chat in about 30 seconds, but I'm assuming they're being very mature about the nickname Cavity. Oh, yeah, no one's mentioned it. It's pretty good. Well done. Snow Ninja Sandcat says he stole the wine. Shit, the wine! Yeah! Oh, no. Oh, well. Uh, uh, um. Door? Hmm. You knock on the door. No response. All right. Into your cabin. Let's just check on the cabin. Cabin's fine. Open your journal. Oh, the ship makes its last port. Okay, return. Okay. Let's go to the fox. Wait, more listening. You overhear two engineers chatting above deck. Or rather, you overhear one engineer speaking with another. Grips. Don't know how the chief could stay down there all evening. Dick. You ever see Mr. Hammond eat? Dick. I haven't. Maybe he doesn't even eat. Man's not human if he can work all day and night on that boiler. Probably doesn't sleep either. Dick. Aye, Dick. It's figurative. Right, says Dick. Uh, right. Griffin Rayner says, all in caps, they're called Grips and Dick. 
Yeah. Grips and dick. Okay, please stop please stop typing grips and dick because it's making a lot of work for the moderators. A lot of work for the moderators. Thank you all. Yep. Hang on. Hang on. Grips and grips and dick, alright. What do you know? Enter the foxhole. Map. Where are we now? Still there. All right. Oh, look. Oh, we can... Oh, this is cool. We can chart our course. Week one. Where were we? Bloody nowhere. We were bloody nowhere. Week two. Bang. We're over here now. Smashing. Let's return. Oops. No, we need to click on the ship. There we go. <clears throat> right, enter the foxhole. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. What? We've got 14 dogs. Did I miss count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Where is the 14th dog? Ingrid Cordell added to manifest. The dogs regard her with rapt attention as she paces between them, bowl in hand. The largest joins her side as you approach. Try some. What's in it? What's in it? Caviar and rose petals. Try the soup. You nearly burn your mouth on the hot broth. Surprisingly tasty. It's surprisingly palatable. You feel yourself warming up. You seem to enjoy it. I'm afraid there is only so much. If you want more, it will be among the dog's leftovers. Cordell, what's your deal? <laughs> I'm just trying to make nice. Penguin. Some blubber. Fats and proteins. Fastest way to hydrate them. Was there something you needed? Just inspecting the animals. They belong here more than we do. Unlike us, they need the ice. It cools them through their paws as they run. They'd overheat otherwise. You've been on the ice for a long time. A long time, yes. Strong creatures. Very. They handle stress differently. Adapt quickly. There's plenty to be learned from them. You love these animals. They need me. And you'll need them. Pet the dog! If it bites us, the stream is over. You ruffle its head. It tries to lick the broth from your fingers. What? How did I eat the broth? <laughs> well, that went well. All right, that's week two done and dusted. Boop. Ah, we have a deficit of uh, fuel. We cannot confirm these rations. We will have to lower our fuel consumption. That's bad. We're going to lose decorum. Because people are going to be cold. But we can't Well, that's going to happen. Confirm the rations. <sighs> Another week passes. The temperatures finally enter the thick ice leads. The days grow ever brighter. Oh, shit. Didn't Alyssa say that out of 100 is what we have for the month? We've got fuck all and we've got two weeks left in this month. We're not amply provisioned! Crinspec Vander says, if only we remember to restock at port. Wait. 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 I... Alyssa says for the week. But... So it's 100 for the week. But... 
Look in your supply cards. You can find... Okay. okay. There wasn't an option to resupply at the port, was there? There wasn't. Unless it says for the week. Okay, alright, fine. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to panic. But I did panic. Week three. Three weeks on the temperance. Three plus three available crew. Great. Open your journal. Another week passes. Temperance finally entered the thick ice leaves. The day grows ever brighter. Ah, oh, Corinne Speckvander says, no, I'm just joking. Sorry. Oh, phew. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, it, no, it would have been good if we'd restocked. How's everyone doing down here? Still asleep, fine. Honk shoe, honk shoe. These are the pamps. Here's the pantry. <laughs> Above deck. Saved game to tree. Look. Look how thick the ice is. Look at it. That's bad. Look, look at the ice it's breaking up in front of us. Oh, an inhospitable land. Map. Yep. Yeah. Oh, this is all just ice. Crap. Well, let's go to the captain's cabin. Let's take some requests. Captain Hunt appears to be absent. His chair is unoccupied. Let's wait. The whole room shudders. Sounded like a fart. <laughs> Leave. Wellity, wellity, well. Oh, God, I actually shuddered. <sighs> Neo Hamilton says, if that freezes up behind you, you're in trouble. Indeed. Hang on, right. Isn't that terrifying? There's not another soul around for, like, hundreds of miles. And we've stopped. No one knows exactly where we are. It's horrifying. Horrible. So... Um, what they sometimes used to do, <laughs> Crinspec Vander has done a super chat saying, really sorry for nearly giving you a heart attack. That is quite all right, Crin, do not worry. Um, what they sometimes used to do was get the men out on the ice with picks um, and with, like, saws to try and cut through the ice enough that the ship could then, like, continue to drive a wedge. Because obviously the idea, you've got the, you know, the prow of a ship. The idea is, is like, it's going to form a wedge and meh. Or, like, sometimes it was just the weight of the thing. So you've either got the force of the thing coming at the ice to, to crack it, or like rising up a bit and the, the weight coming down. Um, they used to use charges sometimes to, to break up the, the ice with explosives. <sighs> Let's examine the problem, hey? What in the... Well, I was worried about this. Look at that ice. We could be trapped for a while. Tegan Evans quite rightly says, you've got no momentum now, though. Yep, none. Strong pressures, as if we didn't have enough bother. Well, no need mucking about. Let's get to work. Where's Hunt? I'll grab him. I'm sure he felt it, too. Sure, check the boiler room. I'm sure the mole man has problems of his own. Not to worry, everyone. We'll be free and moving again before you know it. Back to work. Why is Junior ordering me around? I'm the first mate. Unholy Glee, uh, 
Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, Unholy Glee says, I was going to say this is Moby Dick Polar Edition. Then I remembered the Terror. What an unfortunate name from a ship. For a ship. It was meant to strike terror into the hearts of its foes. Right. Boiler root. Kasha. Officer Shaw, what happened? Ship's come to a stop. I almost flung my camera into the wall. Well, don't do that. We didn't hit anything, did we? Have you seen Hunt? Not since this morning. He was going to speak with Grimly about the lifeboats last I heard. Did he cheese it? Grimly! Ship stuck then? If you're looking for Hunt, you just missed him. How? We didn't cross paths. Don't ask me. I'm going to check with my brother. Grimly, you hot son of a... Right, let's enter the boiler room. Approach the two men. Ah, if I'd made any errors, I'd tell you. It's secure, don't you worry. They notice you. I'm sure you're aware of the situation. What's happening? That sounds like a commanderly thing to say. I am ensuring that the boiler was not damaged in the sudden commotion. And I told you that if it was, you'd already know. Captain Crimbo says, oh my god, he's 100% done a bunk in one of the lifeboats. Yeah. I'm not in the business of making mistakes. I know that if the furnace goes, we go down with it. Yes, but you're only one man with just a pair of engineers as assistants. Just looking at the number of valves. This seems far too much for you to handle, says Templeton. Maybe your bloody benefactor should have considered that, says Hammond. I presume quite rightly. I've gotten used to it by now. It will hold, trust me. I will. Well, I will have to, won't I? I don't fancy staying on the ship any longer than necessary. It's imperative we break free from the ice as quick as possible. Is it now, Templeton? Oh, okay. News to the rest of us. Thank you so much. Hammond eyes you, a grimace on his face. First mate's here, but where's the one who got us into this bloody mess? I was hoping that Templeton knew. I was informed by one of the Stokes that I'd just missed him. But I have a suspicion as to where he may be now. Hmm. We're on a ship, an unmoving one at that. The man cannot simply disappear. If he's anywhere, he must be in his cabin. When you find the man, give him an earful on my behalf, says Hammond. Can't do it myself, too busy keeping us alive. Does the chain of command mean nothing on this vessel? Templeton gives a nod. I believe you and I both owe our good captain a visit, Shaw. Oh, sorry, I believe you and I both owe our good captain a visit, Shaw. But you should call the crew for dinner first. Routine is important, especially now. Alrighty. One sec. Not before we've fed this furnace. Mind grabbing some coal from the bunker, sure? Or are ye afraid of dirty hands like Mr. Templeton over here? I'll grab some coal from the bunker, sure. I'm fun. People like me. Where's the bunker? Coal bunker! Grab some coal. One sack of coal. You lift a sack of biquettes. Speak to the mole man. <laughs> One sec, I'm just going to reply to somebody. He sent me a message. Okay. Keep her lit, Captain. Ask engineers to raise the heat, which will cure, cure the crew of freezing. Let's feed that furnace, baby. Okay. Resource items may be spent here for instant effects. Feed the furnace. Leave. You're welcome, by the way. I'm an officer. 
You, you emerge mid-deck to find the crew readying themselves for dinner despite the ice. Some seem nervous, others as if nothing has changed at all. Well, call them to dinner. The crew have their meal. The dinner is shared. Yes. Ah, the crew return to their post. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. You can't help but notice, but there's still bright light outside. Listen in. You didn't see him either, says Grimly. He didn't pass by, but his cabin door was locked when I checked. Then why were you lying about him? Slippery bastard. What are you thinking, Hunt? Uh-oh. The captain's done a runner, hasn't he? Kasha. No sign of Hunt, I take it. Mr. Templeton passed by, but he wasn't exactly willing to take questions. Hmm. All right, let's go to the captain's cap. Well, let's talk to Kurt. Keep it up, lads. We'll set ourselves right in no time. See, look, look, here they are. They're all on the ice. Ah, sure. I just saw Templeton entering the captain's cabin. Seems Hunt's holed himself up inside. Maybe if you maybe if you had a word with our good captain, he'd be willing to lend a hand. Alyssa says, can you feed the pot? Maybe. Let's just double check. Um No, I can't seem to access the Oh the, the pot's not there anymore. Of course it isn't. Booger. Right, here we go. Unholy Glee says he he done run off or he's dead. Oh shit! Dun dun dun! Hmm. I was informed that he was here. Yeah! He is! Where could he have hidden himself? He has to be in here. Check under his desk. I highly doubt he's cowering beneath the table. Sure. Har! Oh, he's not dead, says Hunt. The captain's laugh rings out from behind the door. The captain watches you both, his head swaying as he chuckles to himself. This is not inspiring. <laughs> at all. You are a surprisingly difficult man to get hold of, Hunt. Seeing that this is your ship. Ha! I know it well. Hunt's eyes turn to you. I believe you two are already acquainted. Yes, we've been three weeks at sea, Captain. How long have you been drinking? I don't suppose you care to join, says Hunt. <sighs> Diana says, it's just a prank, bro. I, yeah, I will never understand those people who are like, I'm going to do something awful and then just say it's just a prank. Like, hmm? Okay. Templeton says, dot, dot, dot. Hunt shakes his hip flask as he holds it out. Whiskey sloshing and spilling from the top. New moon, lead scientist. And what of you, Shaw? I can't tempt you with some sweet nectar? I'm fine. You'll be more than fine with the drinking, you. Oh, well, you're lost. You intend to offer drinks at a time like this, says Templeton. This ship, your ship, is trapped in the ice. Is my ship now, is it? Oh, who are the benefactors? Who are they? Dot, dot, dot. And what do you expect me to do? Get the shovels out? You could have heeded Kurt's warning. What do you mean this isn't your ship? You could at least do your work. I've carried your load and turned up. What do you mean this isn't your ship? Bought us an auction. Not by myself. Imagine that. Captain of a private vessel. And I don't even own it. Pathetic. <laughs> Mr. Hunt. Dot, dot, dot. Captain. If you're not fit to stand, then you should retire for the night. Shaw will stand in your stead, and we can continue in the morning. And abandon my duty? No, Captain, who would do that it is a fit captain, wouldn't you agree? Well, dot, dot, dot. Not you, sure. No, not you. Sure. Isn't that right? What do you think makes for a good leader? 
Being able to do the job, the job I've been doing, making the difficult choices nobody choices nobody else wants to make. I think that's what makes a good leader. Mm, is it? Do you think you can live with yourself? They all act like the choices is difficult. Bah. The choice is easy, sure. Instinctual. It is not being able to sleep after. That's what they never prepare you for. But I'm serious, sure. Do you? What makes a good leader? We don't have the time for inner word, then. What makes a leader? Understanding. That's what I believe, genuinely. And the Zandi. <laughs> Explain. The ability to adapt to your crew to understand the original need, individual needs that make up the whole, to understand what needs to be done, to know your next course of action, to understand your limitations, to know what you're capable of. Adapt to your crew. The ability to adapt to your crew to understand the individual needs that make up the whole. And if those needs conflict, it's all well and good to think you can bend and twist and please everyone. Do you think you could balance that? Scorn a man one day, then it please him the next. Do you think that balances out? Which is he more likely to remember? Speaking of platitudes will do you no good. <laughs> a good leader... <laughs> Fucking hell, this guy goes on. A good leader is uh, something more than a single rule you were told to follow. Well, you see one, you just... You have wasted enough time pining philosophical. Oh, my apologies. I'll ask the real questions. Sure, look at where we are. Do you honestly think we're going to survive this? I have no doubt we will. I don't know. I had no assumptions on returning alive. I don't know. I explain my. The captain laughs. Sure. Nobody knows we're out here. That doesn't leave this room. No, no, no. Wouldn't want to upset your employer. Yeah, no one knows we're out here. Told you it was fucking terrifying. Our benefactor. We all want to be paid after this, don't we? We want to be alive after this hunt. Enough! If you weren't fit to lead this expedition, you should not have agreed to it. You, you shouldn't be. None of us should be here. <laughs> Old Kurt paid handsomely to join. What? What? Old Kurt paid handsomely to join. To enhance his fame? You're just a botanist sent to keep an eye on me. Our doctor, Har... And then there's me. What are we actually searching for? Hunt chuckles, gesticulating mockingly with his hands. <laughs> Ghosts! Templeton opens the door. The captain needs his rest. We'll discuss this once he's of sound mind. Let him speak, Templeton. I wish to know more. It's all right, Robin. Go on now, sure. I'll be all right here. No, I want to know what he meant. Talk to me about the things. The captain appears to have fallen asleep. Tremendous. Well. If I might be so bold. Shit. Captain Hunt needs his sleep. It would appear the pressures of command have greatly affected him. You should find some rest yourself. The crew have their commands. Clear your head and we will continue on the morn. Okay. All right. Sorry.
Okay. Bing. This is interesting. Uh oh. You awake to a room awash with green. That's quite worrying. There is a loud banging on your door and a familiar voice speaks from behind the wood. It's Hammond. Sure, are you in there? Sure. Hammond, what's going on? Why is everything green? Hammond, what's going on? Why is everything green? Cinderill has a, uh, a suggestion. It's Aurora Borealis. Um, but we're at the south, so it would be Aurora Australis, as Aiden Fox says. <coughs> Excuse me. Autumn Murray has done a super chat. Saying, hiya Johnny, just wanted to hop on to say what a constant source of joy you are. Many sleepless nights your videos have helped stop my brain spiralling and get to sleep. Thank you for all you do. That's so wonderful. Thank you, Autumn. Um, that is, A, a, um, a, 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 a very generous super chat, but also um, I'm very glad that I can help stop brain go spiral and, um, and sleep arrive. Because uh, those nights are the worst when your brain just won't stop going. Um, so yeah, very. I'm genuinely delighted to hear that I have helped on some sleepless nights. Um, thank you very much for your kind words. That's really, really kind. Um, <laughs> Moriax42 says, oh fuck, it's that goblin from Hobbs Barrow. Yeah, pretty much. Never mind the green. The boil is in serious trouble. Pumps need manned and we need to stop the whole system overheating. And I don't need to tell ye if the furnace goes, we go. Where is Hunter's here? Where? What am I supposed to do? You're the engineer. Lead the way, then we don't have a moment to spare, is the correct response. Right, let's move. We need to find the captain now. I mean, is the captain still hammered? Kasha rushes up, holding her camera tight as the ship rumbles. What's happening? Are we going under? Not if we can help it. Out of the way. It's safe to go up top, right? The aur that aurora is a shot I can't miss. Kasha steps back before snapping a photograph of the ensuing chaos. Dang it! The fingers Mahoney says, I don't know if Johnny saw the ice. Ooh, boy. There was ice in the room? Ascend above deck. Oh, it's bad. That's real bad. Hey, Ajay says the the ice looks like teeth. I mean, yeah. The lights of the aurora flicker over the pale ice. Captain? Thunder Cookie says we also lost 15 crew at the end of the last scene. I thought that was just because, like, we're not able to use our crew because. I don't know. I hope they're not all dead. Speak to Templeton. Nothing. Visibly perturbed, he takes a moment to compose himself. Even the tub is empty. <laughs> That's very funny. Even the tub is empty. <laughs> Why would you expect him to, to be in the tub? Because that's where he likes to get drunk. Not important. This doesn't make sense. The man seemed barely fit to crawl himself into bed earlier. What? Dot, dot, dot. Hammond turns to you. All right, sure. Captain's missing. You're in charge. Good to hear. Or we can't give up on Hunt that easily. That's what I'm supposed to say, probably. Isn't good to hear is not the thing you say. I'll try my best. Is not inspiring. We, get, we can't give up on them that easily. I bloody well can. He missed his chance to take the reins. Yes, indeed. The crew are no doubt waking up at this moment. They're no doubt scared, confused. It's your duty to keep them calm, to maintain order. Hammond glares at Templeton. 
It's Shaw's job to get down to the boiler room now. We've already wasted enough time looking for that bastard hunt. If you storm down to that room, all you'll be doing is inciting a panic. We need to calm the fears of the crew and maintain an air of focus. It's a very good point. Lie to them as the ship goes down? Not at all. Instead, to assure them we know how to remedy this matter. You do know how to remedy this matter, Mr. Hammond. Aye. And we need to be quick. I don't have time to worry about some stupid sailor's feelings. We've got a bloody ship to save. Well, it's as you said. Officer Shaw is in charge. The decision is yours. Let's have a poll. Let's let's put it to you. Me abdicating responsibility. Which first, the crew or the boiler? I think I think uh, Templeton makes a very good argument. But if the boiler blows up, a calm crew doesn't mean anything. Jack escaped the box again says, I mean, I'm liking Templeton just because he's compartmentalizing, but damn, he's a dick. Yeah, I agree. Neo Hamilton says, the boiler, they'll panic anyway when they see the ice. 82% mm. of you are saying the boiler. 83 now! Gary says you're all screwed without the boiler. Ros Roswell Walton says no boiler, no crew. Hundred and thirty three votes, hundred and thirty five votes, hundred and thirty six votes. It's eighty two per cent boiler. Yeah, it's gonna be the boiler. We're doing the boiler. Hammond is right, we can't waste any more time, the boiler won't wait for us. Fine. I will keep the crew at bay then. Mon, don't worry about him, let's go. I assume that was come on. Captain Shiny says, is there an option to sacrifice someone to the Eldritch Ice Guards? This isn't Sunless Sea, my friend. Dominate Eye says, hi Johnny, I'll come back and catch up later, but I wanted to pop in to say welcome back from your break. Hope you're rested and having fun. I am, it's been good. Thank you very much. Carry choices, the lifeboats are missing. As more of the crew notice you and Hammond descending below, the whispers begin. Shit. We just lost 15 decorum to that. Soon the crew pick up the pace, walking directionless with hurried footsteps. Speak to Kurt. Kurt approaches. Boiler trouble, I take it? I'll lend a hand. Not when you're walking with that cane, you're not. I have enough strength to go tell the crew to hit the lower decks, as many as possible. Let's go, Shaw. Time to save this blasted ship. It's not good that the lifeboats are gone, I will say. Snorpen Bassers can't row boats on top of the ice anyway. No, but people would drag them in sledges. Um, in the hopes that they'd find leads and then be able to, you know, move more efficiently than just walking over land. You descend the ladder. Ahead you can see the brothers trying to open the door to the hold. Join the brothers. Trying to get in? Same. Door stuck. Pull harder, you bastards. We need to get in there. It's the only thing that matters. We need to keep the furnace alight. Can you help us? It's the only thing that matters. The metal of the metal door unsticks. There you go, you just you just flatter the, the door. You're the only thing that matters in the world now. Fine. The metal door unsticks. Grimly looks to you before darting off into the dark. Where's that bloody idiot running off to? 
to sound the alarm, says Junior. Bloody hells. Let's get moving. Grimly. You enter the boiler room. Plus one available crew. Alex Simpkins on a super chat saying, Thank you for getting me into D&D. I've started GMing public games of Doctor Who TTRPG in my local board game cafe. They have been beautifully chaotic. That sounds great. Well done, Alex. And thank you for the super chat. As you enter, Hammond's engineering team are hard at work. The larger of the two engineers loses grip of their valve. Her steam begins to shoot out, causing Hammond to dash forward. Watch it, says Hammond. Hammond tackles the engineer to the ground, saving him from a nasty steam burn. Made it just in time, says Hammond. What's the word, chief? Keep those valves pumping. Well, grips, dick, you've got to keep those valves pumping. We need to avoid a water hammer, or we won't be making it off this ship. What's a water hammer? Sure! The rest of the crew aren't here! Grab a valve and start turning! Valve, 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 valve. Which valve? This valve? Valve. You grab a valve and begin turning, trying all, all you can to keep the water at bay. Pump! You feel the ache in your muscles as you continue to push the valve, keeping the pressure at bay. You feel the ache in your muscles as you continue to push the valve. Furnace rumbles and spots hemorrhaging fuel. You keep turning, doing the best you can to keep the pressure at bay. We could be at this for hours. Shit, where's the rest of the crew? Here they are. Brought help. Oh, grimly. You handsome bastard. Minus ten fuel. No! No! Get me coal and turn those valves! We've got to feed the furnace. Coal bunker, get the coal. Vern Tashi Sheridan. Wait. Uh, Plek, get in there. Shovel. Yeah, fucking. No, get out of the. Oh, God. Uh, Daughter of Iris is on the super chat saying, Johnny, please say hi to my friend Dalton watching this on VOD. I know he'll love this game. Alright, Dalton. If you've made it this far, you either like me very much or you're interested in this game. Hopefully both. Um, I hope you're well. Daughter of Iris says hello. Um, for which I'm very grateful because the super chat's nice and um, you're, you, you're nice, probably. I hope you're nice. I hope you're having a nice day. Oh, God. Oh, I'm not good at doing that. Uh, feed the fern... Wait. Valve... Assign someone. Assign someone to Valve. Uh, two Johns. You there. They grab the Valve. Um, lefty. Uh, Runt's da. Confirm your orders. With enough hands working on the boiler, you begin to fight back the potential water hammer. Someone's going to have to hold the furnace in place. That'll be Cavity. Oh god, what if people die? Cavity approaches. The furnace, the room shakes. Water hammer! A jet of steam paints doom. It subsides as they writhe in agony. When a crew member gains a severe status effect such as wounded, scurvy or frostbite, that crew will become invalid and un unable to work. I'm bad at this. I know it's technically still a tutorial and we're like four hours in, but still... You keep up the work, shifting the valves until the boiler is finally calm. The ship is saved. You won't be sinking today. Plus 20 decorum. As the crew give assistance to the wounded Doom, you feel your muscles tense. You fall back, collapsing from exhaustion. As you lay back, all you can hear are a pair of panicked voices. Where the hell is Captain Hunt? He's gone. That was just the prologue. I, want, I wanted to feed the... No, I can't not feed the crew. Are you joking? No, I can feed the crew. I can.
What? Help! The only thing I can do is not heat or feed for the week. What? Inspired Zombie says this supply mechanic is a bit impenetrable. I agree. <laughs> the fingers Mahoney says, oh yes, full Donner party. Feels that way. You didn't feed the pot this week. Do I have resource? Resource cards! Can I play Sack of Coal now? May I? May I? I didn't add food before dinner. I've really fucked this, huh? I cannot feed the... I, I don't have enough to feed the... That'll be alright for a week, probably, says Alyssa. Alright! No one eats this week. The temperance is safe from sinking. The aurora passes, leaving only the bright light and white. Start next week. That is harsh. One week at temperance camp. Oh, no. You're alone in the captain's cabin. Out across deck can be heard the commotion of the crew. Word has spread quickly that Captain Hunt is missing. Templeton slips in through the door. Sure. Still no sign of Hunt. What is it, Templeton? Hunt is still missing. Rufus Hunt is missing. Missing? <laughs> he was right there. I didn't put the coal in the furnace when I got it. No, the thing just... Oh, well... He isn't alone in that regard. Sanders, Sparrow, and Glenn are also Gren, sorry, are also unaccounted for. Sparrow, missing. Oh, I liked Gren, as this is a si as is a sizable food and fuel supply, and one of the larger lifeboats. They've Cornelius hickeyed me. Sean, you and I are not naive. It seems quite clear what has happened here. Yes, but why would Hunt abandon us? That is a question I cannot answer. I doubt we'll ever know at this stage. The former captain is no longer with us. You understand what that means? Shaw. That would be Captain Shaw now, I take it. Not quite yet. A new captain must be selected by the crew. As first mate, you have the most clear argument to take that role. And how do I argue for that role? Your presence in the face of Hunt's absence is an argument in itself. <sighs> they will hold a vote as soon as possible. That carpenter, Grimley, he is still loyal to Hunt and many of the sailors will follow his vote, if not all. Though I can assure you, have the, I can assure you, have I can assure you have the vote of myself and my scientists. I can assure you, you have the vote of myself and my scientists. Kurt and his crew will like to support you as well. I am unsure where the engineers will side. They're likely they're likely loyal to their pay. They should be grateful that I helped. Bah! Jume is still recovering from their steam burns, which may end up working to our favour. Oh, well, good. And the civilians are a mystery. But I believe that when all is said and done, you will just about make the vote. You've clearly given this a lot of thought. Of course. It is vital to remain aware of the crew's intention. They're waiting outside, sure. They're scared. They don't know where to turn. You and I both understand the importance of maintaining decorum. All right, everybody, listen up. I'm the first mate, but we still need to choose a captain. Uh, if anyone here thinks they're suitable, I ask them to speak up now. In particular, does anybody know how to put food in a pot or fuel in a furnace? If so, step forward. And you shall be selected for the vote. <laughs> 
You and I both understand the, main, the importance of maintaining decorum. Tough times seem dire. Remember, there is a rescue ship on its way. Is there? No one knows we're here. Even if the temperance fa falls, we still have a potential escape. 35 weeks. The ship will arrive at Viscount Island in 35 weeks from now. We should focus on surviving that long. That is all we need to do, Captain. I understand we can hold out for that long. I understand we can hold out for that long. Indeed, that is all we need. Another 35 weeks, Captain. Another 35 weeks! Zike! Zikes? Yikes. Zoinks? What word was I looking for there? I don't know. Keep it in mind. Here, you should have this. Templeton presents you with a fancy looking hat! Hunt's hat! He left it behind in his cabin. That tells us what we need, doesn't it? I am taking the hat. The commotion outside grows. One captain's hat! Wham! Crinspec Vander says 35 weeks is more than six months. Yep. Hunting parties is why we got dogs. I choose to willfully observe reality. I suggest you do the same. Captain. The scientist refrains for a moment. Out with it, Templeton. I think it's best that we declare that the captain and the missing crew are dead. There's no need for us to complicate things any further. After what he did, they might as well be. Like you said, I'm the captain now. We understand each other, then. Wonderful. The crew are waiting for you on deck. Well, maybe we should have... Nah, we shouldn't have... T no, telling them the truth was silly. A silly idea. Okay. The desk. Hunt's ledger is gone. The tab. The last place you saw Captain Hunt. There's still drops of whiskey. Frozen. Well, some somebody needs to heat the bloody shit. Address. The crew. The hushed voices... I love this game. This is brilliant. Look at this. The hushed voices become more distinct as you make your way back out into the open air. You notice the absence of Joom. The crew members notice you and stop. Their attention ripples across the deck. Attention! It should be clear by now that Captain Hunt is no longer serving his post. As such, we should vote in the new captain. I nominate, I nominate Officer Shaw for the role. A clear choice as first mate. And what of Hunt, says Grimly. I do not see him among us, do you? Don't see a body either, says Grimly. He's still out there. We don't know what happened. Something we can discover. For now, someone has to take the reins of command. All in favour of Officer Shaw? Let's start that process, baby! Vote for the next captain! Doom! Abstain! Wounded! Templeton! Me! And the, his team. Nutley! Me! Loyal to me! Darling, loyal to me and his team. This is going great. Uh-oh. Grimly. Oh, lots of people. Stoke. Fuck. I'm losing. No, I'm not. We're drawing. Hammond? Loyal to... Loyal to Hammond? Ingrid? Oh, good God. Belford? Yeah! <laughs> that was very close. You have been confirmed as the captain of the expedition. Well, the eyes have it. Shaw shall be acting captain from this point forward. Acting in Captain Hunt's stead, says Grimly. Yes, Grimly, that's what that means. The crowd look to you expectantly as Templeton gives you a knowing nod. A moment passes in the cold as they await your next words. Curious murmuring scattering between the crew. Wait for them to quieten down. Ah, oh, shouldn't have let them speak. Where is Captain Hunt? Captain Hunt abandoned us. I'm telling them. I'm telling them. You notice Templeton's eyes widen. Oh, I just lost five loyalty. Whispers begin to roll around the crowd. 
He appears to have left this expedition along with three missing crew and one of our lifeboats. I'm telling them the truth. A silence hang in the air. Hangs in the air. As long as we keep our wits, there's no reason we can't survive this. The crowd began to bubble up once more, with more and more questions coming to the surface. Members of the crew start speaking out one by one, with Creston thrown away in quick succession. How are we supposed to survive out here? Is help coming? What about our pay? Will we still be paid? We'll have to rely on each other out here. Or our immediate priority? It's to wait it out until either we are freed from the pack or help arrives. It's to find additional food. Current supplies will only take us so far trapped in the ice. It's to prepare ourselves for land navigation. The ship is an unreliable place to remain. We need food. Ask for reports. I would like the head of each station to report to me going forward. I know this isn't what we signed up for. Gods know this isn't what we signed up for. Stick with me and I will see us through. What of those lost, Captain? A memorial service will be held once the ship is freed from the ice. A memorial service will be held once we make land. Those lost are no longer here, for now we must worry. A memorial service will be held once we make land. Understood, says Kurt. Well, you heard the captain. Get to it. The crowd dissipates, returning to their roles aboard the ship. You passed Templeton. I thought we had an understanding. I won't lie to them. The drama's brilliant. If we can't be honest with each other, what chance do we have? I hope you're right, says Templeton. He looks up at your new hat. Suits you. I am the captain. Da 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 da. <laughs> this game is great. It feels like a it feels like a weird place to leave it when we're just we're just getting spun up. But also, it's ten to eight in the in the evening here in London, um, and it seems like a good story beat to leave it. So, um, oh, we'll have. We'll have the lovely bit of music while we do the um, do the rounding up bit. Um, this has been lovely. Thank you all very, very much. It's been um, a delight to uh, return to streaming after a, a much needed break, um, and it's it's lovely that all of you you know turned up and uh, you know watched basically like the whole way through and uh, super chatted and just generally made me f like feel very appreciated. It's very nice. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Brodette says, can we do this again? Yeah, we'll, I reckon we'll stream this again. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, um, it's been bloody lovely to, to, to come back and to resume working. Um, and to that end, uh, what we got coming up? Saturday, there'll be new episodes of Press Any Key Adini. Um, and then, whoa, on Monday, I'm streaming as part of Idol Champions Presents. Let me make my face bigger. There's me. On Monday, I'm streaming as part of Idol Champions Presents on twitch.tv forward slash CNE Games. We'll be playing Rust on the Harbour in a continuing uh, game of D&D called Fury of the Black Rose. The cast is brilliant. I um, really do suggest you tune in. Um, my plan for the rest of this stream, like for the rest of these seasons, rest of these seasons, for the rest of these streams, um, while Fury of the Black Rose is going on, is to stream um, painting stuff on Tuesdays. Um, but I cannot make this coming Tuesday as I have a prior engagement. So I will probably be back streaming on this channel again in a week's time, next Thursday. Um, but yeah, like I say, there'll be uh, personally Kiyadin to tide you over and I'll be busy uh, sort of beavering away on other Patreon stuff. I do have a Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Johnny Kiyadini. Um... If you want to sort of check that out, you can support me directly over there. Um, it gets you sort of early access to some videos, etc., etc. But um, genuinely, thank you all so very, very much for making me feel very loved. Um, coming back to this stream, it's been great. I will catch you very soon in some, guys. Um, have a lovely rest of your day, and take care. Bye!
The bee joke. The bee joke. I didn't do the bee joke. Thank you, Hetnikick. Okay, here we go. The bee joke. How dare I? How dare I? So, three beekeepers are sitting in a pub. They've had a few drinks. They get to boasting. The first beekeeper, he says, listen, I've got 90,000 bees across six hives. The second one goes, that is nothing. I've got 200,000 bees across a dozen hives. The third beekeeper puts his glass down and says, nothing, that's nothing. I've got a million bees in one hive. You know, the beekeepers go, a million bees in one hive. The beekeeper says, yeah, fuck them. There are only bees. Rogue Monitor says, I can't believe I've waited this long to hear that. Um, the, thing, the, the thing is, the thing is, the, the beekeeper thinks that they're concerned for the well-being of the bees, because there are so many in just one hive. But they're, they're actually confused about the logistics. They're like... How do you get a million bees in one hive? And he's like, he thinks they're being like, how can you keep a million bees in one hive? So he says, yeah, fuck them. <laughs> they're only bees. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 